What's up, everybody? Today's episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Off the Record. You know Off the Record. You've heard us talk about them so many times at this point. You could do an ad for Off the Record. You love it. I love it. We all love it because they're providing an incredibly valuable service to the community. Even if you're not a car enthusiast, even if you're just a car owner, a car commuter, you can get tickets. Anyone can get a ticket for something stupid. Maybe for something you didn't even do. Maybe it's total BS caca poo poo, not a real ticket. Off the record is here for you because what they do is they find a qualified attorney to fight that ticket in a jurisdiction that you got the ticket, right? They set you up with the best the best and they fight that ticket on your behalf in court with the prosecutor the whole deal you don't have to go to court and you certainly don't have to plead guilty you should never plead guilty instead go to off the record go to off the record.com slash tst or download the off the record app on your smartphone and use code tst10 that'll get you 10 percent off all your legal services with off the record you do something small you do something big off the record can help get you an attorney that will fight that ticket on your behalf off the record.com slash tst or code tst10 on the off the record app do it instead of pleading guilty and you will thank me later i promise we're also brought to you today by Dylan Optics sunglasses. You know those awesome matte finish sunglasses you see me wearing in every episode of the show? Those are Dylan Optics. And they are not just cool looking, they are really, really highly functional. It's like HD life. Extreme clarity, great polarization, and virtually unlimited combinations of frame, color, style, you name it. You design your own. You go to the website, right? You go to thesmokingtire.com, click on the partners tab, and then you follow that Dylan banner, right? And you build your own glasses, like a configurator. You choose your frame, then you choose the color lens you want, and Dylan will send them to you, right? You're so unlikely to see another pair of Dylans that are your exact configuration because there are so many combinations of frame and lens types. They've even got prescription. Inquire uh, through uh, uh, Dylan's website directly about getting prescription, but you can do it. Go to thesmokingtire.com. Click on the Dylan banner under the Partners tab, and if you order a pair of Dylan Optic sunglasses, we will send you a free Smoking Tire t-shirt for supporting the people who support us. We genuinely appreciate them. They've been our literal, our longest sponsor. Uh, for almost 12 years now, Dylan Optics has been with us. It is the only sunglasses I will ever wear. I've got like 10 pairs of them. I'm always rotating th- through them. They are the best. TheSmokingTire.com. Click on that Partners tab, and if you use that link, we'll send you a free T-shirt for supporting the people who support us with every frame you buy. All righty, kids. Today's episode is a very special one because Zach and I are visiting Caffeine and Machine out in the beautiful English countryside. If you've never heard of it, Caffeine and Machine is an inn, a pub, a restaurant, a hotel, uh, and most importantly, a permanent ongoing cars and coffee venue. Uh, It's open seven days a week, and it was started by my old friend Phil McGovern, uh, who I met when he was doing cars and coffee events in Dubai uh, like seven, eight years ago. He's now opened uh, Caffeine and Machine. It's been open for a few years. It is a massive success. We have a live, sold-out audience. About 200 people came to see us. It was amazing to meet all of them, see their cars, chat, have a pint in the yard, and uh, and do a great live performance of the Smoke and Tire podcast from Caffeine and Machine. Here it is. Enjoy. Okay, does thumbs up in the UK mean good or does it mean more volume? Okay, yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to say hello to somebody at an auction? Let me tell you, <laughs> they don't like that. That's how you end up buying a 2CV by accident. Yeah. <laughs> Winner to the man who <laughs> did not expect to bid on that. 
You nope. bought an Avanti. <laughs> Fuck. Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast at Caffeine and Machine, everybody. Hello. Woo! Hello. What's happening? <laughs> Cheers. The last time I had a pint of beer was the year 2022. Mm. Mm. Fuck, did I miss out. <laughs> what is this one? The gold? the gold? Something gold? This was Asahi. It, no, no. This is not Asahi. Hey, is it not? No, it's something gold. I have no idea. It said, what is it? No, I don't think it's Thatcher's cider. Gold? He'd have known about it if it was cider. I, I asked for the gold. Oh, it's probably the Cafe the Machine house lager then. It's delicious. Better. You guys know yeah, Phil? So some no, of them do. Some of you do? So I generally hide from people. Zach and I have come from 7,000 miles away to see our old friend Phil McGovern, the owner of this joint, who uh, has created something incredibly special here. Um, the second we drove in, we were like, oh, this is the thing. Because for the two hours until we got here, we were like, where the fuck are we going? <laughs> it's in the middle of goddamn nowhere. Uh, and, and all you people are here. Uh, I presume only partially it's, for us. Thank you a, for it's coming a busy, out. It's a busy really. night, right? You guys are here for us. Everybody else over here is like, God, put Goodwood back on. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Maybe in a long that time. sounds like, this is like what happens with the rolling blackouts where we live. It's just like <laughs> yeah. that. Do you guys have infrastructure here? Is it okay? No? Your all power the, goes back to like the 1300s. All the bridges are 500 years old. <laughs> yeah. Weight limit of 12 pounds. Yeah. The last time I was in England, I went to a guy's house named Chris Harris, who you've probably heard of, who lived down in the middle of nowhere. And he's, There was an odd silence when you no, said they're Chris like, Harris. No, they are like, who the fuck is that? Who's this guy? Who is that guy? Uh, and his house was built in 1330. And he, was, he gave me shit for like three straight hours. My house is 400 years older than your country, mate. <laughs> and, uh, and to be in that house, it certainly felt like it. It was a fucking shed, that place. Yeah, but you had to duck to get in that house. <laughs> it was so short. He's like, That's the this first is thing where you the... said when you turned up is like, where are all the new buildings? Yeah. But there's yeah. plenty of them, right? They're everywhere. I can't just really hidden. tell. Mm. I, yeah. like, do they just retrofit the inside, but the exterior still looks 500 years old? They, they go for that look. Are That's there, there, are there rules for that? You have to make new stuff look old? That's the law? Yeah, I was explaining yeah. to Matt and Zach the concept of listed buildings. That's like that's when it's on the registry, right? It's like a historical thing. It's a nightmare. Right. Yeah, you have to build to a certain set of regs and right. rules, and you have to put single glazing windows back in. Right. So LA doesn't have that. No. So when a house turns thirty years old in Los Angeles, it gets liposuction. What they do is they bulldoze it. <laughs> <laughs> they just tear the whole thing down because it's made of garbage anyway. Yeah. So it comes down in like thirty-five minutes. Yeah. You know, it's great, and then they just suction it up, and it's gone, and then they build something that's even closer to the property line. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's really good strategy. So if you go to the hospital here, is the hospital made of stone and you're, they're just boiling water and they have Man, sheets some and of them, it? some of them are horror. Yeah. They oh, have you, you, they don't have even know, you don't even know they about a national health service, do you? bloodletting out here? No. Huh? We you don't even don't. know about a national health service, do you? Fuck. We know you should exists. see my health insurance bill, bro. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And I get nothing for it. <laughs> um, so, do you know there was a caffeine and machine before caffeine and machine? I started to say that I, I met Phil in 2015 in Dubai, the other side of the world. Yeah. One of the farthest places you could go from here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and of all places to make a, a British friend, Dubai is an interesting one. And uh, we were doing a shoot actually with, with Chris Harris and my friend uh, JF Musial and Mike Spinelli for a television show that we had called Drive on NBC Sports. And it was great fun until Top Gear took Chris. Said you can't have him back. And that killed that show. Thanks, fucking BBC. <laughs> Assholes. That was when you met the Bin Ladens for the first time, right? Also, yes, that. Well. That was. Yeah. How, were far, like, how far do I want to take this joke? Here is a nice person. Mate, we take it all the way. Oh, okay. We met some of them early, a couple of years before that. You did. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as an American, that was weird. Um... <laughs> John Hitler. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting name. I sell vacuums. Oh, where's yeah. your family from? Oh, so you're you're an architect? Argentina. Huh. Okay. Yeah, we did a live we did a live chat that day as well. We did a live chat that day. And and so Phil was a partner. Was that your place? You were a mm. partner? Oh no, no, no. Cafe Rider just just let us do what we wanted to do. So it was like a it, it, and you had an event there basically called Caffeine and Machine and it was their cars and coffee. 
and we're in Dubai, and it was it was like a vibe that I had not seen in that city before. Yeah. There's like dudes in dish dashes with like a '67 Mustang going, yeah. bro, it has LS swap, and you're like, <laughs> what? What the fuck? And then a Bin Laden's like, would you like to see my Bugatti? And I'm like, fucking no. <laughs> um, but then when Phil came here and said, I'm doing this thing, and I, I, I Zach and I really made it a point to to come visit. And it took five years, but here we are. It took five years. It yeah. took five years in Goodwood. Five years, yeah, five years and uh, Lotus writing the check. Yeah. Shout out to him. Well done, Rob Borrett. Shout out, Rob. Where's yep. he gone? Rob, Rob from the Lotus. There he is. Rob looks like he's- Round of uh, applause for Rob he Borrett. Looks like he's for joining sure. a, boy, a boy band in 1998. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is either NSYNC's manager or Lotus's PR guy right now. <laughs> and we're not entirely sure, but he set, he set us up. He got us nice, got us a mirror to drive. Got us a stage to chat on. Took us to Jensen Button's cottage yesterday. That was nice. all right. Guy's cool. Nice. That guy is cool. But but coming here and doing this with you guys was a super important part of of this trip. We had to see first off whoever's handling your Instagram, keep them around. That's yeah. ace because nice. it makes it look nice. <laughs> really, so it looks like it looks much classier on Instagram than it is in real life. You know, there's less mud when you Instagram. swipe that filter all the way to the right. You're like, yeah. damn, you got to put texture layers up. Place is vivid, uh, but no, this is beautiful. A permanent cars and coffee outpost in England. Who'd have thought it would work? Is it is it very hard to have cars and coffees here, you guys? It, it is right. Do the cops get really pissed and they and they kick, and it's because people leave them like assholes and crash into things. Yep. Huh. So I see it's not that much different. Nodding. 300 Man. years in a war, and we're in the same place, you guys. <laughs> this is why we do Don't Be a Dick. Yeah, it makes, it makes sense. It's the only way we could control it. Yeah. Was this, was this always your dream? I mean, as far back as, you know, as, as Dubai or more? Before. Before. Yeah, before. So, um, yeah, before we met, there was, there was Crank and Piston, and uh -huh. there, was, there was the creative agency. But, yeah, to do something like this... I don't know, since about 2006, 2007. And do you guys appreciate it? Appreciate it being here? You guys do? Do you guys all come here? Uh, raise, raise your hands if, if today is your first time here. Oh, wow. wow. You're welcome, Phil. Buy some merch and a beer. This hoodie was worth it, bro. Yeah, look, I've told you. The <laughs> fact that people turn up that have never been here is yeah. absolutely And how many sick. of you guys come here pretty regularly? Oh, the Whoa. vast majority. Okay, there you go. cool. Yeah. Better. It's great. I like. I, when I saw the, the stuff- Look, some of these doing, guys have been here since day one, like Phil, James, they're everywhere. Literally here. on that couch this whole time. You've just been been here for five well, years. James James, right here made made these. Oh, really? Made the light fixtures? Made the door handles when you turn up. Cool. You open the door for the first time. Yeah. Phil was marshalling. Fraser, you were marshalling on day one. Like, oh, these, so you these... did earn the reserved couch. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Yeah, guy on the reserve couch did earn his Dan, You were here day one as well, That's Dan, great. Right? So cool. yeah, there was a lot of people that were here from the beginning that helped, because there was five of us when we started this yeah. place. Like five people, myself and my business partner, Dan, and we kicked a skateboard into market. And so what was on your, what was on your like mood board? What was like the most important things? And you said, I'm going to build a, a permanent cars and coffee establishment. Fully inclusive, no yeah. velvet ropes. Uh-huh. Except for those velvet ropes in there, right? Which velvet rope? I'm just kidding. Um, um, yeah, no, it had to be inclusive. Um, I didn't like anything that smelled like VIP. Um, everyone was welcome, and we had to be the, the beginning, the middle, and the end. It got a bit weird when it got really busy. Right. Because we had cars parked, like, a mile that way down the street and a mile that way down the street because yeah. we only had 90 car parking spaces. I hear they don't like success in this country. <laughs> yeah, it's called tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, like, yeah. Cut it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a major issue. And then and then we expanded the, the car parking, as you've seen, because I took you around earlier. We, we literally, we opened with 90 car parking spaces. We can do 350 now-ish. Yeah. Ish. But we did it all retrospectively. Like, we just did it. And then we waited for the council to come and steamroll us, which yeah. they did. So um, you've got, a, you've got a, a small hotel, an inn. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a bar, a yep. pub, excuse me. Yeah, cafe, you've, bar, restaurant. You've got a restaurant. restaurant you've hotel. got coffee. Yeah. You've got a tent. Yeah. Uh, you've got a uh, social media presence. You've got a lot of outdoor seating. It's, yep. it's, it's got all the, it's got all the elements. Yeah. And it's, 
Yeah. It's been a juggle though, right? It's like a spinning plate everywhere. Right. That's fine. But do you but you're also the social director, right? So you've got a you can't just like they always say in America they say if you build it they'll come. It's from a dumb movie. Mm. It's not true. No. It's also that's the problem. That's why it's a dumb movie because it's not fucking true. No. And so it's if you build it and then you keep giving them reasons to come every single day, then yep. they'll come. Yep. You need seven reasons a week, every week, 52 weeks a year. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, what is, what is the ethos of that? What are, where, where do you, where do you come up with reasons? What are the reasons? Uh, well, I suppose this is where it gets fun. It's, um, look, you, we all know the car industry is massive, right? And the car love affair is huge. Mm. Um, if you can somehow find non-exclusive reasons to put a party on, you've got you've got a reason to bring people into the yard. Yeah. Um, it, it's a it's a constant creative headache. Like you have to sit down every single day and go, how do I do something that's not just a Renault day or a Peugeot day? Um, I could think of a couple of reasons to not do a Renault day. <laughs> Just saying that might be. You're gonna need 14 <laughs> tow trucks at the end of the day <laughs> yeah. to take them home. Yeah, so it, it's that. It's that constant kind of understanding what these guys are all about. So to do that, you've got to come and sit out inside and talk to them and get what they're all about. And then you can start to build a proposition that works, right? And so, I mean, something I've known just, I can see just looking out at, at the crowd, both here and out there, is it, this is young people. This yes. is not, this is not a place for old, I mean, it's not like not for old guys, but like. <laughs> But uh, and I say that as an emerging old guy, but, but this is overwhelmingly you know where we're young like eighty percent twenty four to thirty two. Yeah, see that's where that's good, that's peak earning years. Yeah, that's where I'm making money, but I and I'm ready to spend it all because I am not remotely fiscally responsible. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and every car brand we speak to says that young people aren't interested in cars or buying cars. Yo, that's such bullshit. Uh, young people don't have any money. You're like, young McLaren's like, young people are not interested in our cars. I'm like, young people don't have $500,000 to spend on your car. And if they do, they've stolen it from somebody. <laughs> yeah, but Lamborghini's the twist in there, though, right? Lamborghini? Yeah. Like, what? average age in the UK for a Lamborghini owner is freakishly they low. Grab the freakishly young, they low? grab anyone who's like 18 yeah. to 20 that has can finance, you know, $400,000. Right. Huge with YouTubers, I hear. Well, the Lambert, yeah, I mean Lamborghini. The thing about them is they they will sell you a car. There's no. Well, that's actually something I like about them. There's no like, if you want a Ferrari, it's and it's actually not the fault of the manufacturers at that point. It's the dealers. They make you jump through all these hoops. They create mm. a scarcity. Meanwhile, at the corporate level, they want to sell as many cars as possible. Yes, but they pretend like you know they get you in this hamster wheel of well. I'll let you order a new one if you buy this used one and then you trade it back to us and it's a this and that. Um, whereas both McLaren and, and Lamborghini, you're like, oh, you have money and it's from a very sketchy place? Please, let me show you what Aranciata Borealis <laughs> looks like on our configurator. They're also yeah. not overly... Um, they don't have a massive issue with you modding their cars. Right. True. Whereas Ferrari get hyper nervous, right? So, oh, yeah. dude, you take a badge off a of Ferrari, they're going to sue you. There's a fella staring at me over there that's probably modded a Murcielago higher than anyone in really? the world. Yeah, so Phil, Phil Morrison from Driftworks is sat just oh. over here. Um, oh, yeah. you have that? Is that your uh, that GT1 replica thing? Is that yours? Oh, I've seen that on Instagram. That's fucking cool. Is that here? Oh, you bitch. Oh, it's broken? <laughs> cool, mine too. <laughs> Did your did your spiral out of control when it broke? A little bit, yeah. It happens. While you're in there, yeah. My while you're in there started with the window crank. <laughs> the window crank broke, and I drove it to to Donnie, who works on my car. And within three weeks, the suspension was apart, the engine was apart, and I'm rebuilding the entire car now. Yay! <laughs> I might see it before Christmas. That sounds like something nice pulling up to the Someone's yard. Someone's fruities arriving. Something yeah. is. What is that, guys? Dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> Dominoes. Nice. My man is quick. Dominoes. If that really is fucking Dominoes, bro, you're on point. Thirty minutes or less. That's fuck. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> That's. Oh, and it was and it was the geezer. Dude, it's Hell a, yeah. it's oh, a, a white, Ferrari? white 458. Yeah, 458? Bonnie. Very. 488. Oh, white right. One. Miami right. Vice back. Yeah, it's nice when we got a couple of Ferraris in the yard. Yeah. Lots of, dude, you know, the, we have really enjoyed seeing the car culture in this in this country. 
it um I mean it's it's really well represented in the media. Yeah. You know, your your car media, um, from top gear to auto car and Evo and all that stuff is consumed globally and is still kind of the, the gold standard of yeah. motoring journalism. But um to actually, you know, see people out in like really cool, somewhat oddball cars you know modified in all different ways has been really rewarding this trip it's been a lot of fun i mean there's you have an eclectic mix here which is very exciting and then even at the goodwood parking lot there were you know people parking ferraris on grass next to someone with a van and then going back to the young people thing there were a lot of kids that were very excited to see cars at goodwood and they're looking at old race cars new race cars you know beast of terrain all that stuff and they're just excited about it so it's just if you give them access when they're young they're going to be excited Look, I think the best part of Goodwood's the car park. Have you seen the burnouts? Not, Those are pretty not good too. Walking, <laughs> not <laughs> walking from the car park to Goodwood. That's not the best part. Um, the car no, park's like a wonderful equalizer. Kind of like when you go to Monterey, you'll see people yeah. parallel parking things on sand that would normally be left with valet. That. And that's that's very refreshing really? to see. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys watch? Did you guys watch Goodwood before you got here? It's pretty it's a it, it was our first time and uh, that that event has really earned its reputation as being a a worldwide gold standard. Mate, it's a fucking exhibition. Yeah, it's the most insane thing you've ever seen. It is, but people, I mean, all my English friends were like, "Ah, oh, it's, it's fucking, it's too busy, it's a disaster," and it was busy, yep. but it was not that bad. There are worse disasters. It was all right. You can still get really close to stuff. You can still stop and talk to drivers. You know, you can still get food and drink in a reasonable period of time. Yep. You know, you can still pee uh, <laughs> you can anywhere still you like. Five, yeah, yeah. On five, the minutes to get a, five minutes to get over a bridge, though, man. It's a bit, the bri- they need to build some more intense. bridges. That was the one The one thing is they need, the, they need more bridges. You think you guys would know how to do the bridge thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're famous for it. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, they do need a few more of those. Yeah. Apparently ZZ Top played last night at the, uh, at oh, the man, ball. That's cool. Just pretty. We didn't go to the ball. We're not black tie people, and we weren't invited. I assure you, if we were invited, we would absolutely be black tie people. <laughs> We're too good for that shit anyway. Oh, you have an extra table? Okay. Well, I want to try the pheasant. Who, uh, who interestingly went to Goodwood just out of interest? You lot? Anyone else? Who, who tried to go and so I talked to this this gentleman with his Lotus uh, over here? Said he drove down there and got five minutes from the gate on Saturday morning and found out they closed. Homie didn't check his Instagram like refresh, the night before. Refresh your email. They put the announcement out like 16 hours before that. <laughs> Dude. I had a mate flying in from the Middle East. And oh, we got, met we met multiple people yeah. in other places. You yeah. know, when when you have an event with 50,000 people and all of a sudden they all descend on somewhere and have nothing yeah. to do. <laughs> that was a really interesting day. Rob, did you get to do West Side Story? What? What? West Side Rob, Story. Rob, he's desperate to do like a remake of West Side Story with a whole kind of like automotive crew world and what? That, no, that was the perfect opportunity to. Although this is, a, if, if stupid, any right? of you are in Los Angeles, there's something going on which is the Fast and the Furious musical parody, Ooh. and it's incredible. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, really, really incredible. It is the Team America of Fast and Furious. <laughs> And it is worth your $35 and more. They should charge triple what they're they charging for that shit. But we went to a car museum yesterday called, I'm going to print, I want to, I don't, I don't even want to print, how do you pronounce it? Bewley. 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 Us and 4,000 other people went to Bewley. <laughs> We were like, oh, look, a car museum, and everybody else. So the car park at Bewley looked like the car park at Goodwood. We were like, holy it's shit. Like AMG GTRs Except the wild horses, and stuff. Right? Yeah. What? Except the wild horses. That was surprising. The way in was beautiful, but all of a sudden we were in a pasture with cows, open range, deer. I Uh, felt like we were in safari. Not a bad car museum, though. Pretty good. Yeah, Lord Montague was a was a cool bloke, man. Yeah, apparently Lord Montague and his grandfather and yeah. great grandfather and several generations of Montagues were just blowing cash on cars <laughs> left and right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, they're cool guys. The problem is it's so far away for the yes. majority of people, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And England's tiny. Like you can you can travel top to bottom England as what it takes to get from like top to bottom California. But it's it's still a long way. I think you've just shrunk California by quite a wide margin by doing that. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's California well, is California's uh, nine hundred miles, top to bottom. Okay. I know because I've done it in one day and it sucks. Okay, yeah, I might be calling like great. <laughs> I tried Britain to do it in Isles. one tank of diesel on a Mercedes uh, E three fifty. 
Started at 4 o'clock in the morning on the Mexican border south of San Diego. Drove north at 57 miles an hour. Thrilling. The fucking thing ran dry 16 <laughs> miles from the Oregon border. Mm. I did eight, uh, 884 miles on a tank and then ran the thing dry at like 3 o'clock in the morning. But That's probably the worst thing you could do to a diesel, right? A fun thing I was told them what I was doing. when we were really low on fuel, we were drafting a semi-truck <laughs> using the night vision on in the center of the E-class's mm-hmm. gauge cluster. Mm-hmm. And we, we couldn't see his mirrors. He didn't know we were there. But we were just like, we need every mile we can get. <laughs> It was uh, <laughs> both great and terrible. Is England how many miles top to bottom? Is oh Christ, I don't know. How much? Eight. Th- oh, so it's pretty oh boy close. knows it. John O'Groats lands end. So yeah, Scotland to uh, far bottom yeah. corner of Cornwall. Yeah. yeah. Any Scots here? You well, <laughs> Aberdeen one? boy. I was right there the last year. What a great place. Scotland is great. Amazing roads. Really friendly people. That whole thing about not understanding them—that's bullshit. Turns out they speak fucking English. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Really, yeah, really fast. And somewhat drunk sometimes. But then again, I was too, so it worked. So I didn't shrink California. No, no, actually, I, I inflated it. It's a close. I was, I it's close. I just missed the whole American. country out. It's a horse mm. um, But, uh, but uh, yeah, the, a day off for 50,000 people, it turns into some interesting scenarios. Uh, this, it was like Mardi Gras in uh, Cheshire. Yeah. Just drunk people. Cheshire? Did I put... <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Matt's just made up a whole new one. Say it right. Say it right. Where are we? Chichester. Chichester. You know, it's a someone, weird. Someone needs Worcester? to teach you guys how to pronounce it. I mean, it, you <laughs> know, between the steak sauce and, I mean, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Aluminum, of course. <laughs> this, deli- this delightful part is Where are you going tomorrow? Given. We're going to Hethel, which I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing correctly. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to drive lotuses. It's, it's the worst pronounced one in the world. One what, of one of the worst. Is it Heathel? No, Norwich. Norwich. Yeah, Norwich. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're gonna it's go an drive, easy one to trip drive over. some uh, some low tie. Low tie. Low ties. Many lotus. Yeah, multiple lotuses. And uh, are you going on the track? Yes. Yeah, yes. Right. Sweet. Yes. Yep. Rob is nodding. Yeah, we they are have unlimited tires. They said, didn't they? Yep, yes. Rob's nodding. Unlimited it's in the name, right? tires. <laughs> yes. And a few clutches. Yeah, no problem. Yes. Whatever. I like it. Pre-pro car. Have they got a bit of gaff to to play around with or just? Gav might be there. Yeah, oh, Kershaw. Man, you Gavin Kershaw. Gavin Kershaw is, is Lotus's performance uh, as dynamics guy. Yeah. And I was with Chris yesterday, uh, Harris. Again, I'm just dropping names left and right. And he goes, have you driven with Gav? He. <laughs> and I was like, no, not yet. He goes, you have to drive with this guy. He beat Travis Pastrana in a drifting contest, yep. which is no small feat. If you watch Travis drive up the hill, this is a man, this is a man with no nerve endings left. And... Uh, he, if, if you can beat that guy in a driving contest, Travis is a bit Travis is a bit loose around the edges, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's a good time. His skeleton is held together with glue, but he's a good time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He is one crash away from a wheelchair at all times. Dude, did you, did you see the, the, the clip of him? Like, oh, my. Oh, my God. And then he, yeah. he diagnosed himself. He's gotten hurt so many times that he's on the ground, and the paramedics are there. He talks into the radio. He's like, yeah, I think I cracked my pelvis. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. L4, was L5. Right. It's he L4, was right. L5. Yeah, it's done. Honestly, if you've seen it, he base jumped out of a building and didn't pull his parachute yeah. inside. Yeah. Well, 60% I think of it he opened. pulled it. I just don't think it worked properly. Yeah. Yeah. It was bad. It was absolutely it was really loose. Bad. So he was he was driving Kaisel's design car yesterday, right? So yes. one of one of the one of the guys that comes here quite a lot, Kaisel, um, Penman. Yeah, you met Kaisel. We interviewed him. You did on the Lotus stand. You did two days yep. ago. How Unfortunately, did that go? nice guy, really nice guy. Unfortunately, there was an audio error and the podcast went. Uh, wrong. That explains what you said about better than the Lotus stand, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, there's a thing about audio. You want to have control over it. Well, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> when you meet someone the same day and they're like, "I got this, bro," verify, don't trust. The system looked good. It just yeah. we had a, we had a problem we didn't expect. The bars they were moving. The so bars the on bars the screen moving. were moving. It's oh, just, so you ended up talking to yourself for an hour and a half? Yeah, ish. Uh, so, and and about hundred people, two hundred people that were on the stage. So that yeah. worked. They we're all, gonna they have all heard him, the interview. Uh, we're gonna have him back in. You uh, if you yeah. got, do you guys know? You have no idea what we're talking about. We, there's a guy on on Instagram called the Kaiser. Oh, they know. If you know, they know the Kaiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, he 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 does some of the most crazy, most aggressive, um, like like CGI body kit builds, uh, retro future designs, and he's just a very regular dude. He's got a bigger touch point than just that, though, hasn't he? Right? He designed the cars that we all played in Need for Speed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he went from like playing, yeah, to being hired by Need for Speed. Yeah. And uh, and he designed Travis's um, Subaru. 
Family uh, Huckster. Family Huckster bunkers. Subaru and, um, and, and a bunch <laughs> of other car. stuff. And, and he was just, you know, he, he's, not, he's not a personality. His work is, he's an artist and his work is the personality, right? Yeah. So he was at Goodwood and he just got himself a media vest and was just walking around as like a photographer. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, you got to have hobbies, man. <laughs> and, and he came to do our podcast and just like took off his photo vest and like sat down on the stage with us. And then he's like, it's like he took off an stage. apron cause he was making eggs for people. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, Oh, I got to go do this thing. And then I'm going to come back over here. Yeah. Um, but his designs are just amazing. Yeah. The guys, the guy's got a talent. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And so now they're turning it uh, uh, into the into real body kit brand, which I believe is called LTO. Live, yeah, live to, to a, offend. Live to offend. Mm. It's a good name. You're good at naming stuff. You have the eye for more na- people for need to offend. Things. Well, I, I, my, I, it's, it's missing in this. It world, should be right? a ratio in the car. Like for sure. When I choose a color for a car or an interior for a car, yeah, tell me I about want like pay- an like an eighty five fifteen eighty five. People get it, and fifteen percent people are like horribly offended, Ooh. and like go way out of their way to say really mean things to you about it. I don't know, man. I feel personally the other way around. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I crave approval. That's why I do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your pink Porsche. <laughs> you know it. It's pink. It's a, pink cars. Pink cars are so hot it's right sick. now. You got to have a pink car. You guys I'm see glad my you pink did, car I'm, on Instagram? It rules. I'm glad you didn't do Ruby Stone, though. That would have been... It's too pink. That would have been a step too far. I don't know the yeah. right amount of pink. Yeah. You know? It's like they said in, in uh, Tropic Thunder. You never go full pink. <laughs> um, the uh, Yeah, no, that color, Frozenberry Metallic, is mm. the best color. They are running. A, they were running a Frozenberry Tycon up the hill at Goodwood, and whoever was driving it had a very heavy foot and was just... Cutting the lawn every single run. Yeah, they they ordered both their press Porsche, but ordered but they had a GT4 press car, uh, Cayman GT4, and the the Taycan, both ordered the same color. Yeah, the, the UK time. the UK press car was frozen berry metallic. Yeah. Everybody kept sending me pictures of the same car. I'm like, yeah. that's the fucking press car. Yeah, um, but and you're one of five in the US or one of five yeah, no, global. One of what? No, US US. That car is like crazy. That color is crazy popular in China. Uh, so they sell. It's like a regular color. They sell to everybody in China. And there's one at the bottom of the ocean. Yes, if anybody would like to go fishing. That's what the Titan folks were actually looking for. <laughs> Ariel the mermaid is cruising they found around. They it. <laughs> Just not in the same way they expected to. <laughs> Sorry, it's, that's too late for that joke. That joke would have been funny like three weeks ago. No, I think amazing. it was clearly well-timed. Don't you guys love it when really arrogant Americans are like, no, we got this, and then they just <laughs> don't. It's a good way to hide the facts, though. Great, right? It's a great reminder that billionaires really are smarter than the rest of us. They deserve all that money. It's because they're smarter and they work harder, and those pesky safety rules are just in the way of progress. All right, a room full of billionaires. Okay, fine. <laughs> Nobody's with me on that. Fine. You guys lick boots. Fuck you. No. <laughs> I think the problem is that the guy who built the submarine didn't have the billion dollars, and so he they, he got a lot of money. Inexpensive. That guy was pretty Rico Suave, bro. I think they'd cut some corners. I think they I think, fired well, their safety officer. I heard he ordered three Lamborghinis, and they were like, "Come on down." Twenty-one percent financing from Carvana. Oh, Zach just read this. You guys have a Carvana here? Good. Do you know what Carvana is? Have you seen the photos of it? Oh, mate, tell us about Carvana. What is this? It's the most American shit ever, okay? You, you know, the fast food culture yep. has now decided to go fast food cars. Okay. They built what they were calling car vending machines. You may have seen photos of this. It's a glass box, eight to ten stories tall, yep. full of cars. And it's a car dealer. It's a used car dealer. There's nothing to it beyond being a used car dealer. But well, like Japanese, like storage they, style. That, yeah, yeah. In the glass box. Yeah, they you know, pretended like, the Japanese hadn't done this ten years ago. Or the right. mini Mini Cooper dealerships in America, yes. at least they often have like these giant displays. So Carvana yeah. took that, and they, yeah. then they took the CarMax model, yeah. and they merged them together. Right. They spent a lot of money on commercials. They hired Stephen Colbert, a bunch of other people to do these ads, and right now they are nearing insolvency. Uh, well, before that, for like this two, is like kazoo, but d- delivered differently. Right. So for like right. two years, especially like peak COVID, when the car market, the used car market went crazy, everybody was dumping their cars to Carvana because they were paying like five, six, ten thousand dollars over the value to get the inventory. And we found out why in their disclosure when they just filed for bankruptcy. They're trying to sell their debt, and uh, the average loan is $22,000 at 21% interest, which is about what you get with a bad credit card. 
So, so that's why, why would a business pay 10k over for a used car? Because you're selling it to someone for 21 percent. Yeah, and they're the bank. Fuck. Yikes. Well, and so uh, there's that's a, all going to come tumbling then. Oh yeah, literally mm. the vending machines will crumble. Um, there, if, but if you if you go you need to, to buy that stuff, to America, right, for your storage facility, it's not yeah. actually very efficient storage. It's okay. a it's a great display. Yep. He, so many people are like, dude, Carvana's for sale. Buy it because <laughs> uh, I park cars, and it's uh, it's not very good storage. It's right. it's it looks cool though, and I mean, imagine like the UV that's like going in there and just melting cars. It's not good. No, um, but uh, but Goodwood. Is a how did, uh, how did we get to Carvana? We from subs to cup. It was submarines. It was, oh yeah, Pop, sub popping submarines, submarines right. subprime. It's all it's all the same. Yeah, uh, is, is the subprime. This market. is like an ADHD conversation. This is wild, bro. You gave us the double shot of espresso and, and a pint. His first beer in six months. <laughs> yeah, I'm wasted off this three ounces of beer, you guys. <laughs> ounce? What? Oh, what's an ounce? It's how oh, it's we like buy four weed. liters or something. Sorry, right? whatever. This two hundred and fifty oh, yeah? milliliters of beer, you guys. Um, <laughs> it's what a twentieth. Oh. Thank you for that, Max. Nice. Thank you, sir. The old man like in the corner Siri, is Siri useful. just dealt with that, no? Maybe the yeah, human calculator yeah, yeah. is perfect. Thank That's you. That's my Siri much. voice as well. It's yeah. a sixty-five-year-old <laughs> British man. Yeah. <laughs> Turn left, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Uh, you missed it. Wait, hang, you want to like this? you missed that ball when you cricket game when you were seven. Hey Siri, how many ounces are in a pint? Oh, oh, it didn't speak. You fuck. Mine is an Indian man. <laughs> oh no. Hey Siri, how many ounces are in a pint? The answer is 16 fluid ounces. It's so it's so it feels like I'm calling customer service. You know, have they outsourced all that shit here too? I only get India. It's all right. They're always very nice, but like, God damn. High level efficiency though. It's very efficient. It is. It is. But I just like to feel like when I'm asking my, my AI device, like it's a real, uh, like it's a real human. And it does. It makes me smile every fucking Mine is time. set to waspy white man because it yeah. makes it feel like it's a little more even. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We're just going to get AI fully made up shit very, very soon. Though. Very soon. Very, yeah. very soon. I've had but so many honest, people right suggest <laughs> to me that I should just start an AI car website. And I go, and, and do what? And they go, you know, write articles with AI. Anybody actually want that? I thought you did. <laughs> no? I outsourced myself in the videos, <laughs> yeah. you guys. If you're listening at home, I'm not actually at Caffeine and Machine right now. I just typed into chat GPT, do a podcast from Caffeine and Machine <laughs> as Matt Farah. And that this is where we're at. Matt yeah, Farah, Porsche do submarine, and it's just don't, hit enter. Honestly, don't do it. It's I tried so to, uh, I typed into chat GPT to write a car review as me. And you know what it didn't do? Sound anything fucking like me. No. It sounded like a four-year-old writing a car review. It's bad. It wasn't good. Yeah, we've, we've yeah. tried it. We've played around with it. It's, um, it's bad. You know what it is good for? Cutting clips for Instagram. Okay. We use it, you know, because unfortunately we've learned that the value of an Instagram clip is $0 doesn't convert to actual views. Nope. So the software will watch your will watch a podcast. So why do you bother with it? If you were to play an 80/20 rule, why are you on Instagram? Vanity. <laughs> Pure vanity. Yeah. We're going to yeah. need that couch. He's going to he needs to lie down for a second. Uh, <laughs> uh, why are we on Instagram? I don't know why is anybody on Instagram. No, no. Well, here's what we've learned is that when we put a clip up that is an engaging conversation. People watch it and they get engaged and they comment a lot and they're discussing the car or the thing. Yeah. What they don't tend to do is click through Jump. to listen to the rest of the show. So yeah, but are they twin screening it or are they? You're just not seeing a. You're just not seeing a. Social media platforms are designed Correct. specifically to keep you on that platform. Sure. Whether that's but you've got no way of knowing that they're engaging with you on Instagram and then bouncing onto YouTube on the uh, TV. Well, we, we right? see we were seeing big numbers on the Instagram post, but not increasing numbers on YouTube or in the podcast. Yeah, so, so if a clip does there. a huge number on Instagram. It doesn't translate to the episode doing a huge number. Because you remember when? So when JF very kindly gave me access to all the social media for Drive, right? It it did. Oh, like back when, then. But it when was, was that? Working. 1912. That, yeah. I mean, that, that, they, they've changed this stuff. They've they, just locked they, it yeah, up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very stuff. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, use, I don't know if you guys ever see, you know, you people use Instagram to link to social media. If they write the words link in bio, 
Instagram, like 80% of the time, will shadow ban the post. Yes. And they will not sh- put it in front of people. Yeah. So you'll be like, if your average posts get like, this is real insidery, I'm sorry. But if the your challenge, average posts get like 2,000 likes or whatever and 100 comments, yeah. and you do p- post them with Lincoln bio to get like 100 likes, yeah. it's because Instagram sees you trying to get people off of Instagram. Yeah. And they're like, I know what you're doing. Disappear. Yeah. Disappear. Look, the, big, it, the biggest challenge with all of these algorithms is to sell as ambiently as you possibly can right. without ever calling out what you're actually trying to do. Yeah, yeah. You have to like not use the the terms that you mean. Yeah. Tickets available online. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's just they don't they Dead don't in like the water. That. Yeah. Uh so anyway, cars. Yeah. Um what uh I quite, what I quite, quite like the arrogancy of social media though. What? What? Like the arrogancy of social no, yeah. no, no. I like the conversation about going down that line. It's an intriguing one because these guys all know you probably through that route, right? Or well I don't know. You tell me. Who knows Matt through YouTube? Who, th- who knows Matt through Instagram? Ooh, YouTube. Oh, wait, let's do hands up if it's from the podcast, podcast. not YouTube. Podcast? Ooh, half, half, half. Okay, hands down ca- uh, car review videos. Eh, there's some overlap. 50 oh, 50. Okay. okay. That's cool. Intriguing. That's cool. We'll take it. Click on everything. Sit through the ads. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit like and subscribe. Smash that like button, yo. Smash it. Um, we have. Uh, we have uh, been really interested in how often you have to put uh, the left side of your car into a ditch in this country. It's really frequent. Yeah, and the worst thing about driving down that side of the road is the tree ruts that yeah. come through the tarmac that ruin the left side of your yeah, car. Yeah, it is tough. And you don't need, our car that we're driving is not a big car, and we still have to do it. Man, the Amir, you, like, the Amir is big. Is it? That's England big? She's chunky. I mean, you seen a Raptor? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fair. You've got you've no, got a whole different ball game. Joke aside, Amira's wide. It's wide, but it. I mean, Aventador's wider. There are other sport, super sports cars that are, I think are a little bit wider. Yeah, but the Amira's mildly accessible, right? Aventador, not so. No, no, very true. I mean, I can't imagine driving like a supercar, hypercar around here would be terrifying. Do they have rules against widening the roads here? Because <laughs> we have done that in places, and there's a shoulder in America or a bike lane, but yeah, here- but Where can you go? There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to expand. Can't you cut the hedge down or something like that? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's it's nowhere to really expand. Tight. Meanwhile, it's just grass on either side. It's not like, no. I, I don't think you need to widen the roads. I actually really like that you guys have small cars here. Just, I, love a, I love a small car, yeah. and I, I really don't like huge cars. Uh, and even in America, where we have a standard standardization yep. of lanes and parking spaces and shit like that, you know, if a parking space is is ten feet wide by twenty feet long, fucking Ford and Dodge and them are happy to send you a truck, sell you a truck that is exactly the the width of that, so you can't even open the doors. It drives me nuts. Yeah, see, we don't get that. We don't get big. We don't get big scale trucks. Like a Ranger is big for us. Yeah, a they, so they drove uh, earlier today. We were at at Goodwood. And someone has a Raptor there that they are using as some kind of a crew vehicle. Yeah. And they drove it up the driveway, like in between sessions. They didn't do a run. They drove it up towing a, a trailer that had a motorcycle on it. And even on the driveway of Goodwood, like by itself, it looked comically enormous. Yeah, they had to move the hay bales a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I refer back to Phil Morrison. Tell us about your old tow truck. <laughs> what, do you, what do you have for a tow truck? Oh, a 3500 30. Dually? <laughs> In the Jesus. UK. In the UK. <laughs> do you have to what shut down nightmare. both lanes and then, you know, like call the do you cops have to have and they a lead fl- you? Do you have to have someone walk in front of you and wave a flag like London to Brighton? <laughs> do you follow the, like one of the Royals parades and you're just like, I'm just trying to get to my next town? That is that is a terrible. It's just wrong. That's yeah, the, ro- the roads are narrow. The roads are narrow, which is why I was saying that that left-hand drive flex is yeah. an interesting thing. Left hand, you- left-hand drive in, a, in this country is better than right-hand drive in America. Yes. Right-hand drive in America is kind of... Yeah. It catches you out in car parks and drive throughs That's it, about it. Oh, and the M6 toll, which is a nightmare. They keep talking about drive throughs Don't go and eat at drive throughs That's, a, that's just bad. like... It's bad for you. Bad. Just don't... Do you know how many times... Starbucks drive through Do you know how many times people ask me about my little bad. right-hand drive cars and they're like, but what if you go to a drive through Don't. You don't. <laughs> you just don't. Um, a lot of people do, though. <laughs> Didn't Tesla just try and uh, eliminate uh, right-hand drive from a couple models here and uh, in uh, in exchange give you one of the handicap claws? Did you guys see that? I'm up for a bit yes. of that, though. I used to have a T-Rex head on a stick. I have one. Useful. I have one for the, the parking garage mm. uh, things. But the problem is 
Those things have no uh, tensile strength. They don't The clamping rip. force is quite weak. Yeah. I almost so lost a credit card in France because <laughs> I was driving an AMG GTR Pro from a shoot, and I had the grabber thing, and, and it was like, and I started grabbing the credit card, and it was slipping off. I was like, fuck, 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 and then there's people behind me at the toll booth. It was very terrifying. It's easier just to get out and act cool. So I, yeah, I drove that, car, that same real car cool. on the other direction. <laughs> And every what five kilometers? This was it was an SLS black oh, series, SLS black, yeah, in nice. Stormtrooper white, nice, which is the most obnoxious car mm-hmm. to be driving across France. And it doesn't matter if they know that it's an American driving it or a British car; they hate you. And so you have to. We had to stop, and and they don't take Amex, as it turns out, which is what we had. Uh. And so stop at every five kilometers. Get out of the car. Walk with the door open, like vertical. And people just looking at you like you couldn't be a bigger piece of shit. And uh, they were right. They were right. I was, and uh, and and the car really had it coming. Parking one of that, parking that thing in Monaco was it's a big. struggle. Mm. Mm-hmm. You needed a spotter like a seven four seven coming in at Heathrow. I still think it's a rad piece of kit though. Oh yeah, good car. Of cars Looks that good, have come and gone. I think, I think the MGT cars drives wild. better. Yeah, the GT drives better, but the doors go up, and that's ten points. Right? How many times have you hit your head on it, though, when you're getting out? On the door? Less than I burned my leg getting out of a Viper or a Cobra. Fresh out. Right? Side Fresh pipes out. are real cool when they're someone else's side pipes. <laughs> when they're your side pipes, they're awful. Yeah, I think the first time I drove an ACR, the side sill was bubbling. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> that's, like the, that's like one of the best worst cars or like worst best cars. Like it's good because it's terrible. Oh, it's wild. Yeah. You just we never saw, see them in the UK, though. There probably, was one at uh, at Goodwood, yeah. like a 1995 uh, in that sort of McDonald's uh, yellow with the red interior. It was very uh, outspoken. That, yeah, there's a resurgence of coolness associated to the Viper. All we, of a seeing, sudden, I find myself wanting one. them appearing bit by bit. Yeah. They're, they are they are cool, but they're all... If you ever, have you driven one? Yeah. They're awful. They're bad. Yeah, they're, they're just bad. Yeah. And, um, but, they, but they have an attitude. Ooh. Whatever it was a bit was, like the, I got all nice. excited about a Diablo GT recently, and I was talking to a guy about the Diablo GT, and I, I kind of said, what's it all about? What's it like? Um, and he went, mm-hmm. Hated it? <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, you know, would, I, would I enjoy it? And he kind of went, it's, uh, it's an experience. That bad, huh? Yeah, so this is the owner of DK Engineering who oh, had one who, for sale. Yeah. And I'm like, so B-Roads? And he went, uh-huh. <laughs> like, he wouldn't commit. And yeah. I've uh, I've driven <laughs> I've driven a Diablo once. It wasn't great. Was it um, was a Diablo VT threatening him if he told the truth? Like it sounds like he was pleading. <laughs> yeah, fit. this was like Bad Boy GT. It was like the thing. Interesting. I still think it's the thing. I'd, I'd probably have ama- one whether I amazing. could or I couldn't. It yeah. look, there was one at uh, on the the supercar lawn or oh. whatever. And it, what is that? What is that? Something good? Uh, it's a. Oh, it's an R8. Oh yeah, they're all right too. Oh, that's the. Those are those are the opposite of Vipers. They they are much cooler to to drive than they are to to look at, you know, or or <sighs> sort of. Collect. I've had my first experience in an R8 recently. I've I avoided one. Aren't my they enti- great? <laughs> no, not no. Great. We we had the so we've got the Audi have very kindly given us the V10 manual. <sighs> Wait. What do you no, mean? not V10, manual. It's rear wheel not, drive. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, it's not manual. Bad. Manual. Homie's Everyone making went, shit up. It's not stick. Yeah. Um, Don't like it. I don't know, man. It's all a bit. It's all a bit vanilla, in a weird well, way. Well, yeah, Is because it's an Audi. Because it's sterile and functions well. If you take or? a Lamborghini and make it comfortable, yeah, where's it the, gets boring. Where's the mm if you hit, press the right pedal? And then, yeah. mm. that mm is well, okay, I think it's maybe, maybe I was driving it and it was absolutely shitting it down with rain and I never really got to oh, give it. Oh, that's a like totally different ball. Yeah. Full I scale recommend running. the second half of the accelerator pedal. Yeah. That usually solves that. Yeah, rain is not its environment, especially on the tight roads. No. What, what do you own? What's in your garage or what do you like? So we'll what do out I like? Your palette. Ooh. I like quirky sure. things. So I've got, a, I've got a short wheelbase 912, which I love to pieces. Um, I've had that car since I was in my early 20s. Stock engine? or did you uh, Look, as far as I'm aware, it is. Um, but it's, fast. It's, okay. it's looked after by someone that tells me it's not. Um, so very, very lucky, fortuitous that we have the Tuthill family just down the road. Are they right here? Yeah, they're like 20 minutes that way. Oh. Um, and Richard's dad, Francis, looks after my 912. And he tells me it's a 720. 
CC with so I've I've watched your video of that 720. They rip right. You oh, get them. You the get one them I drove that was built by John Benton. Was yeah, so, very fast. But yeah, yeah, so but Benton knows how to do his stuff. Yes, he, yeah. he's the guy in in California. And a crime. Nine twelve. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When I met Richard Tuttle, I had no idea who he is. Yeah. Up until very recently, he had no no name or presence in America at no, all. Up until nine eleven K. Uh, yeah, and I mean, and and and. You know, social media has helped him uh, and, you know, people like Ken Block driving his cars and, yep. the, and the school and whatnot. But um, last time I was here, Chris said, we're going to go visit a guy. Yeah. We're going to go see my friend uh, Richard. Well, they went to school together, right? Okay. We go over to the, and, and Richard, and it's just a, he's just a guy. A lot of cool Porsches around this shop. And he goes, I've got to test this little dog box in this uh, 911 rally car. Do you want to have a go? And I go, Chris, do I want to have a go? And he goes, you want to have a go? <laughs> and I go, Okay. Right hand drive car, you know, it's a good late sixties kind of car and, and uh this guy gets in. Nobody mentions nobody mentions that there is a rally stage on site. Yep. And that that is what we will be going on. And the rally stage is across the road from the shop, or at least it was. And so he turned right out of the out of the shop and we, we drive up the road for like a quarter of a mile. Yep. Uh, you guys have miles, right? Yeah. We drive the road for a quarter of a mile. This guy yanks the handbrake, and all of a sudden, we are on a gravel rally stage. So Richard Richard knows what he's doing, It right? turns out this man can drive a little bit. Yeah. So he used to compete with, like, Burns, McRae, yes. Yes. Subaru Rally School. Yes. Guy was fast. And by, quote, testing the dog box, <laughs> what he meant was... Break it. <laughs> Almost breaking the dog box, but then dialing it back, you know, point one. And so we are flying. It, this 911 might have made 110 or 120 horsepower. It was not a lot of power. But we are, he is, he's got these big, like, you know, working, he's working at a shop. So he's got big, like, you know, kind of steel toed shop boots on. But I can see his feet. Mm. And he is not using the clutch nope. at all. And he's got his right foot on the gas, his left foot on the brake. Mm. He never takes his right foot off the floorboard. Oh, yeah. He just pumps the left brake with his left foot as needed, combined with handbrake, slamming the thing into gears for the scariest mile and a half of my life. And then we just get back on the tarmac and he goes, I think it's good, yeah? <laughs> I go, it's good. I'm fucking not. And I, I got back. I'm like, Chris, who the fuck is this guy, man? And you go, you don't know who Richard Tuttle is. I go, no. This is King Tut. Well. Now, now you mm. do. Have and you heard about his 911K? Mm -hmm. Yes, the gold thing that mm. he brought to uh, Quail last year. So Phil K's car, yeah. Apparently it weighs like under 2,000 pounds or something and revs to oh, 11,000 RPM. fucking numbers again. Siri, help me. It's, a, it's what? Is it 1,000 kilos? It's under so a thousand kilos. It's, for eight, sure. it's eight hundred kilos yeah. with a tank of fuel. Jeez. Yeah, it's like it's like acid dipped and uh, just crazy. It's, it's had most of its uh, most of its B skins have been so its A skins are all carbon, and the majority of its B skin is now carbon. Whoa. Yeah, um, it's kind of lightweight. And then there's a company called Swindon Racing Engines that have put an eleven and a half thousand RPM it's, uh, red it's line on it. It's de Yes. So yes. they've actually, you know, my Porsche has has a stroker engine in it. Yep. So we go from four liters to four and a half liters in my car. This one they've went the other they way. The they've de stroked it from, you know, two point two to one point nine or something. Well, it was yeah, three three two to two five. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so you know, shrunk so it down to make it spin faster. Yeah. So it goes to eleven. Eleven and a half thousand. Yeah, which is bananas. Yeah, um, it's still only three hundred and twenty brake, but it's yeah, but it it spins. weighs as much as a shoe. Yes. Um, and so actually, Phil Phil K, who who mm. he said I could have a go. I actually mm. know that dude. Mm. Um, bit of a heavy hitter that one. He's a cool cat, Phil. Extremely cool. Mm. Uh, Phil K is. Uh, can I say some it? of you might know him because he's the guy that lands his helicopter in the back car park. When we've, <laughs> he's, yeah. Phil K is that guy, right? Oh, that if you sense. if if you ever you know Monterey Car Week in in California is like the big the big thing. There's an event called the Quail Motorsports Gathering. His family owns that venue, among other things. They own the Quail. And so, uh, yeah, bit of a heavy hitter. Very nice guy. Loves his cars. He's got the greatest laugh ever. Yeah, and most importantly, said I can have a go in the 911. Where's that car? You need to follow this up. The car it's is currently in Wardington, like that way. Like you need to go drive that car. I would like to. It's sat in the workshop. Why isn't it in America it, like, yet? The other day. Uh, well, because Phil lives in Gloucester. Oh, he does. Or Hong Kong. Oh, I thought or he lived LA. in LA. Oh. Or. 
He lives oh. wherever the plane has landed. He yes. Lives. yes. This. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's Quick props to Phil. That's amazing. Yeah. You guys, you guys know how to build cars here, and how to know how to restore cars here. The restorations that go on in this in this country are second to none. Yeah, they were all a bit powder puff in the U.S. in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, they were bad. Yeah, if you want a shit restoration, yeah. come to America because we got a lot of them. They came this way because when the yeah. dollars when the dollars right, we scoop them up. Right? Why? Why is that? Why is the coach building or restoration stuff here just such high quality? Um. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I'm going to throw that one out to the yard. Actually, anybody know? <laughs> there you he go. Says we built them in the first yeah. place. So you restore you restore rovers really well. Is that what you're saying? Touche, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, get the man another pint. Get him another pint. Something. But yeah, good good paint jobs. Good yeah. metal work. Um, yeah, less bondo. Do you not have environmental regulations here, so you can paint them the way? Yeah, they but you, yeah, but some of the some of the paint jobs that came out of the U.S. in the eighties and they were bad, man. Oh, super yeah. like two and a half thousand dollar in in the eighties, nineties. We didn't give a fuck. Yeah. All we cared about was stealing money from people and doing yayo in the eighties. Yeah. That's all yeah. we gave a fuck yeah. about. Nobody was paying taxes. Nobody was doing nothing. Yeah, it was just nobody I can was paint going six to cars work. In Twelve minutes. I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. Line them all up, same color. <laughs> nobody was doing Roll shit. Roll the windows down. Yeah, so there's a lot of cars being fixed, and there's a lot of effort and a lot of money being put in cars that probably shouldn't have that level of effort and money put into them. Right, the over restoration. Oh. You said, did you guys see that new resto mod Diablo thing they just came out with? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do we like it? I see. I Quiet. see mix a mixed bag. I'm a thumbs down. I'm Mate, not. It, I'm it not was, into it. Ugh. I'm not into it at all. I think it looks awful. What about the 928 one? There's a couple different ones. One was very good. The Daniel Arsham one was not good. No. One one was I thought one was pretty cool. I forget who made it though. It was Does it was the not. world need that many resto mods? Bro, do you know how rich the rich people are now? <laughs> do you know how many cars you can buy now that are over a million dollars? Yeah, it's insane. Give me uh, a number. I mean, <laughs> like I, I I last counted a couple months ago and there were like sixteen cars you could buy in America that were over a million dollars. Brand new production cars. And meanwhile, there are every year a reduced number of sports cars that you can buy that are under a hundred thousand dollars i mean it's it's very unfortunate that manufacturers have figured out that to sell a hundred cars for three million dollars each is way easier than selling a thousand cars for three hundred thousand dollars or ten thousand cars well, koenigs for, got there first right they were the first people to figure that out i think uh well, them or Pagani, they're what the first million dollar car was. No, the, the first people to realize that they needed to do the hundred to get the super low volume, mm. super high value. Oh well, turn I mean, it, spin it, Ferra rotate it. I mean, it, Ferrari one, had figured one, it out, and, and yeah, they, they've all kind of kind of got there. The Aston one seven seven. I mean, pick your pick your manufacturer. They've they've all figured it out. Um, mm. It's just un, it's unfortunate, but like, and there's no either or. There's only and. Yes. You know, someone who's got a Chiron also has, the, 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 they have 40 cars. So does it create a hit and a miss sometimes with the product? I'm going to say that, and then I'm going to say Singer. People are very invested. Mm. When, when people buy a car for multiple millions of dollars, they're so invested in it, both emotionally and financially, yeah. that they don't want to then turn around and go, this thing was a piece of junk. They never, they'll never say it no. because no, they, the because second, they want to flip it to somebody for more. But, but the you, secondary you refer tertiary market will always kind of tell the truth because you'll see some things continue to rise in value and then some will start to Some drop. will just tank. Yeah. yeah. But you, you referred to 177 with Aston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That had a media blackout at launch. Well, they'd sold them all. Yeah, but no one was allowed to drive it. No one was allowed to reference it and no one was allowed um, to give it any kind of quantifiable or qualifiable feedback. Uh... Sure. Did yeah. that not indicate that it was a bit shit from the beginning? Well, the the values have not indicated that. They've stayed incredibly valuable. They've been over MSRP since day one. They've never, never gone below MSRP. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, that car was built by ProDrive, basically. Ooh, yeah. That's a ProDrive car. So I, I don't think... I don't think they were another shit. business that's fifteen miles right down here? the road. And yeah. and the people who I've never heard anyone drive one and go, "Well, that was terrible." I think cars have been unfairly judged. Uh, by journalists, which then they turned out to be wrong, like the Lexus LFA. 
which was amazing to drive, in yep. my opinion, yep. but a lot of people wrote negative things about it. And they've never been below sticker, except nope. for maybe the first year. Yeah, and they've first been year, over, definitely. And, yeah. and, and, and that's, that's smart money right there. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, smart money, DLS, singer. Yeah. Speaking of DK earlier, there's a, there's a, who's seen the peppermint green DLS that floated through DK Engineering recently? It went in at 1.9, it came out at 2.9. Okay. <laughs> Second hand. Nine days, the guy owned it. Oof. Whoa. They're flipping the waiting, DLS. The waiting up. list. We, we met someone today. They've been waiting three and a half years for their singer. They put the money down. I mean, if you can cut that line and you have the money and write a check to somebody else for, you know, a million plus, you'll just get the car today. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Jensen was talking to us about his uh, singer yesterday as well, which is Cassis Red because pink cars fucking rule. Pink cars rule. Uh, and he, he even, he, I mean, even he, Formula One champion, had to wait. Two and a half years to get his car. At least, yeah. Do you guys like that uh, turbo DLS thing? Does anyone? You guys like it? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Anyone? The I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down. big. I'm gonna go big. Swing and a miss. Wow. I think that's a bad looking car. So I, I thought the I person. thought the gold one looked really weird. I thought the back half looked different from the front in terms of like it looked like two different cars. Then we saw the they had an orange one today on the stand. Yes, that somehow hid like the square shape of the intakes on the side. Have you seen the video of it, it coming out the camera? Yeah, Goodwood. absolutely. That's yeah. the one I went. This is weird, but it looks better in. I think maybe colors help determine. Because turbo uh, study is a really good looking piece of kit. Like, yeah, I that think, looks. I think nice. that's restrained, study. but that. No, the, the Turbo DLS we saw in person today, the orange car, is pretty rad. But I do think, I think, personally, the first, the singer they made their bread and butter on is one of the most beautiful cars ever Which made. they've stopped, right? No more. So, well, I mean, that's, you set the bar so high. They've stopped taking orders. They're still yeah. building out the orders they've got. And now you yeah, add class, more classics things. are no more, which yeah, is why done. all of these kind of copycats are floating around. Yeah. yeah. And there are a lot of... 935-ish generation race cars that are not the most aesthetically pleasing things, but they were just racing. What are they going to do with finding cars? <laughs> when they run out of 964s? They've got like a buying team, right? They'll do, yeah, they do. But they'll do what uh, what Roof does, what Roof just did. You know, Roof Roof just made this new tube frame thing yep. that looks vaguely like, a, looks like a 911 till a 911 pull up. Oh, but and, the Roof uh, one looks good. Yeah, it does look good. But, they, but Porsche stopped selling them bodies in white which is why they had to do that. They didn't outright come out and say Porsche mm. no longer sells us bodies in white. And have they gone, is it 12% different so that the IP lawyers don't come hunting? Yeah, I mean, whatever it is, it's wider and it looks like a Real 911 longer, until, you, lo yeah, until you park one next to a 911 and it looks very different. Um, but, but that's why they've done that. Um, but, uh, I mean, look, the waiting lists that the we I, I spoke to the guy from Singer today. Yep. I spoke to the guy from Gunther Works today. The Gunther Works Turbo looks fucking awesome. Yeah, you like a Gunther Works. I right? love me a Gunther Works. Because yeah. I you know why? Because I've driven one. I've driven four. And they are super rowdy and they are super fast. You know, the at the Laguna Seca Hill Climb last year. Uh, the Gunther Works Speedster beat a La Ferrari by four seconds. Whoa. I mean, that is that is a a La Ferrari, like that's that's a that's these a cars huge are well gap. done, right? Because Lehman they're, Lehman Keen threw that four liter singer around Laguna yeah. Seca as fast as a four five eight. Yeah, yeah. They're they're the, and the Gunthers are really well built as well. They're yeah. they're really well done. And Jeff Gamroth built their engines at Roth Sport, and they're and they're crazy. What were, you, what were you not? I was going to do another Phil Morrison. You've, you, you're RWB, right? How is it? Working? R so, so RW, you, you have one? Or yeah, but he's got, the, he's got the all steel, slightly smooth fender job. So, well, the, yeah. The, the thing about RWB is they do body work, right? So, so, that, so. It's, there's a lot of fucking stuff going on on that car, though. Well, but on yours, but like if they don't. In general. They don't yeah. force you to do anything else besides the body. So, some of them are amazing. Yeah, some of them have the proper suspension control arms and added power and all kinds of good stuff. BBI makes a RWB kit yep. that lengthens all the suspension right. geometry because some of them just go big offset, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, so the way to tell if an RWB if, here's how you guys tell if you could tell without driving an RWB Porsche, you guys know what these are, right? The super wide bodies, right? The way to tell if it's good or not, you don't have to drive it, right? And he'll you'll back me up on this. If you draw, if you look at one and they've got a crazy deep dish wheel. Like you could stuff your forearm in the dish of the wheel, it will drive like a steaming pile of dog shit. It will be all over the road. It'll be horrible. The geometries are fucked. If it has a very small offset, meaning 
like you could fit maybe your fist in the in the wheel or or less where the the face of the wheel is closer to the outside of the wheel it'll probably drive pretty good that's because you need to lengthen the control arms with those cars like they did with the race cars you see a porsche 935 race car Mm. it's crazy wide but it doesn't have a huge offset no that's for a reason uh, the RWBs, if you want to put a wide body car without doing anything else, you then have to put these crazy wide wheels and they drive like they're horrible. Mm-hmm. They're a disaster. So that's, you can just look at one and if someone's got a huge offset, just point and laugh to yourself because that guy is having a really bad time to try and look cool. It's the thing you see a lot more of in the US than you see here though. It's a rare bird Bro. seeing an RWB in the UK. Well, super rare the bird. The roads are narrow. Who wants to widen a car here? What a nightmare. That's terrible. Also, I think America, we have a lot of uh, like car trends that are based purely on aesthetics while yeah. parked. Yeah. yeah, is that a thing here or yeah. no? Uh, yeah. Do we slam things on bags here? Yeah, we do, right? Yeah, hard the parking. Stance Nation, is, hot rods. Hard stuff parking like that. is cool here. There it's was stuff in Goodwood. Culture, right? There was stanced out cars at Goodwood, dude. Yeah. Some real broy shit. You guys, I'll tell you what. Well, you guys, had their first nobody had the fucks there, right? up a Range Rover like the UK. You guys. <laughs> Some of these companies are selling straight trash. There's some real tactical garbage going on these Range Rovers. <laughs> and they have booths at Goodwood that look very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, 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 yeah. You do a good Range Rover, but then you also know how to ruin it. It's like us with, you know, everything. everything. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, there's a lot more people in the U.S., which is probably why you see a lot more of this shit floating around. Oh, man, I get ads for tactical hoodies and shorts. I'm like, what does that even mean? Yes. I go to war in cargo shorts. Yeah. Yes. Um, but the, so, fle- the flex is fine though, right? I'm all up for the flex. I'm all up for fucking with a car. It's a representation of what it is that you enjoy. It's when you're, it's when you're playing that full scene card that it gets a bit weird. Well, if you're willing to drive something that's that fucked and yeah. that difficult to enjoy. Right. Yeah. And that much of a nightmare, then it gets a bit weird. That's why I love air suspension because, I mean, when the cars are, are parked in a parking lot and they're dropped on the ground, it does look cool. For whatever reason, the proportion of hidden tires, all that stuff, like I think some of them look really well, it's good. how every designer does a car, right? That's true. I mean, like Big Ka- wheels. Kaiser, he said, he's like, I love it when the car looks like it's sitting on rims with no tires. That's why every concept car looks absolutely peachy and yeah. every production yeah. car looks like a woeful interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you put 23s on the production car. Oh, that's what it looked like on the And then if you can just lift it and then drive home like a normal person with normal alignment, that's great. But And then they have that, to consider like curb height and this and that. Can you kind of get into this driveway? Yeah, oh, it was one of the, it's one of the chats that we were having with the with the Lotus. So your, your mirror is distinctly higher than the show car that announced the vehicle's arrival, right? But it had to look right, feel right, be right on the show stand, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden realities of life come into play. Well, I appreciate that because I had to drive on a curb this. today to get around a row of parked cars in, uh, this. in Winchester. Like r- Winchester? Is that where we were? Yep. Winchester. Yep. Y.N. Nice Chester. It's yeah. Nice place. It's an expensive part of the world. Uh, we talked yeah. about this. It's well, hard well, to find parking. Yeah, no yeah, parking. As we, we experienced It's because the town was built in... Nine. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that they, the whole country though? They, yeah. make, they make a nice rifle uh, over there. <laughs> I like your I like your guys's you guys make good guns and then don't let anybody have them. I think that's very This is wise. the better way of doing that's it. That's very smart. Yeah. Yeah. Um unless you're a farmer and then you're okay. So before we uh before we wrap this here show up and mm. let you guys get back to uh well drinking. Um Sunshine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk this one. Do you, anyone have any car questions they want discussed on stage right now? It looks like Dan does. You were shaking your head there. Go on then. Uh, orange. What is the weirdest UK only car that we've seen? Now, I don't know what cars are UK only. So, well, that little, that little Vauxhall. Uh, Nova. No, that's a Nova? Wow, they exported the name Nova here? Yeah. You got the Chevy Nova. We got we the got Chevy the Nova. Nova. Which is one of the all-time yep. naming fails because in in Spanish it means doesn't go. Um, it's not it's as yeah. fucking <laughs> just literally it's not extra as, it's stupid. It's not as bad as what was it, Mitsubishi Pajero? Yeah. That was a good one. Well, and then the, what, why is the Pajero? What's wrong with Pajero? It's Spanish for wanker. Is it? Get the fuck out of here! Pajero uh, means nice. wanker. Yeah, which is why like it became a show you gun. Mean, you mean like literal wanker or? Yep. Like Gen- someone who wanks. <laughs> 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 What's the difference? Yeah. Um, well, and then there's, I'm the, gonna the, say this there's right. the Starion, which oh, we hun- got, which was crazy fun. Yeah, Hyundai Kona. 
Does it, what is that? What, is, what does Kona mean here? Does that mean something? I don't Kona, know. About? Sorry, I mean, it's I, an I, island. It's an island, it's an island in Hawaii. What? It's a what? It means cunt. Yeah, in there what, we go. In what language? Portuguese. Yeah. Oh, Portuguese. Yeah. Fuck you. That country is mad little. Fit. Okay. Cunt. Fit means Fit cunt means in cunt Swedish. Cunt in Swedish? <laughs> yeah. Well, don't they call it the jazz? Here though, okay, yeah, they don't they don't sell it as fit here. Okay. That's true. I like this game. This is fun. This is fun. This is, game. But this is why. What other cars mean why, cunt in other languages, you guys? <laughs> this is why so many cars are called the EX two nine five. Yeah, yeah. And we get right. mad, and the car companies are like, you know what? We named a car cunt by accident. They're not afraid. <laughs> so shut the fuck up. They're not afraid to name stuff anymore. Uh, God, there's yeah. gotta be some other ones. And Anyone? there's the you know the Mitsubishi oh, 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 Starion, got... which was accidentally racist. You know that? No. You, did you get the Starry in here? Yeah. So you know that was supposed to be Stallion, but someone was just accidentally racist. Stallion. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, you can't unhear that shit, can you? <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what happens when a naming and a badge is being printed and it's being uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what's it? <laughs> spoken over the phone instead of by email. <laughs> yeah. make a, like what's it called? You, oh, okay, and they and they put it in the machine. They print the label. All new car is called Stallion. <laughs> yes, yeah. Stallion. Write that down. Cool. All Ron, right, you've got one. What? What car do you get here that we would love to have? I oh, mean, there's Alpina. a lot. The Alpine. A110. Alpine A110. You know, Sorry, Rob. Oh, the Alpine. We've never driven an Alpine A110. Ripper. And. The Alpine so guy good. offered to let me have a go up the hill in one. Are so but good. Somebody paid our way here. <laughs> 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 they just honestly, they just look shit. I think like, I, I disagree. Up. I don't like the way I they look. I disagree. I, I think, think they, they look, look all right. I think yeah, but if cool. you see a, if you see a traditional Alpine next to the new Alpine, well, it looks like a VW Beetle next to a. You new can't concept. build Dude, the, the traditional, traditional one, one. Is the size of this table. It's, it's so, so small. Tiny. I can't fit in one of those. Audience cam just died. Thanks, guys. Somebody said beautiful. It. Who said beautiful? Uh, yeah, the A the A one ten. I think it looks great. We would love to have. Um, you guys have a, a lot of good estate cars. I mean, this is going to be boring, but like yeah, this, wagons are the C class estate. It really bums me out that we don't get that. That's you not really, get the sixty three S. No. <sighs> And when I le- when I was here last uh, four years ago, my demonstrator car was a CLS sixty three with um, like, shooting brake, like, and that one that I drove was the only one I've ever actually seen. Monster. Um, are wagons yeah. still popular here, or are yeah. crossovers yeah. taking over? No, yeah. no, no. Wagons are still. Nice. Yeah. It seems That's like that good. for the parking lots, but yeah, yeah. To the point, BMW have just dropped the M four wagon, right? So. We we saw a couple M four tourings and or I guess mm-hmm. they're M three tourings here yep. and they are d fucking lightful looking. Good profile, bad face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That beaver face. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that forever, beaver face. The forever that conversation. shit is heinous. It's the opposite of looking at me. I get it. The, the back the back almost <laughs> uh, almost saves the front <laughs> in that car. Yeah. There's got to be, else? There's gotta be more questions. Dan, VIP couch. Used to sell Land Rovers. Okay. Okay. Yes, you do. You know how to fuck them up. That's. The, okay. I'm going to repeat this for the people at home. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. My man used to sell Range Rovers and had something called the No Imagination Pack, which was uh, white over black. Yeah. Go on. That's uh, silver for Porsches, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> PTS silver. PTS baby. silver, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, we... <laughs> what is our no imagination back? Uh, point at a globe and bomb it um, would be our first no imagination back. <laughs> um, uh, well... Uh, turning anything into an app. I mean, I you think, know, yeah, I think, well, I think gray, I mean, I, the matte gray or slate gray or any of the grays, it's, it's basically a way to tell people, oh, do you like black cars, but you don't want to clean them? This kind of looks black, but it also doesn't look dirty when it's dirty. And every single car on the road is now this stupid gray. And some com- car companies have only been selling basically gray tone colors for a long, long time. Dude, it's that's because annoying. every salesman that you talk to goes pink. You'll Dude, never yeah. sell it. Yeah. My, when I spec'd out my Boxster, I bet the salesman was the, shitting himself with the, the concept no, the, of you coming the, back. The Porsche, at him. like the uh, exclusive person, was like, "You're sure you want this?" Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I do." Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. Um, it's like a ten yes, percent I mean, reduction in a, 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 a silver over black crossover. Oof. You know, pick pick one. 
could Cash be a Kai. could be a Tiguan. We don't get. Thank God, we don't. We get, get the rogue. We get a rogue. Scotland the rogue, rogue is the same. It's the same yeah. thing. We don't call, get, get Kosh Kai. What but, does um, Kosh Kai mean in American? We could, <laughs> it means cunt. <laughs> we, we, we can't pronounce it. If we can't pronounce it, we don't want to buy it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. All right. Kosh Kai. Kosh Kai. Yeah. Qu- I don't know what that is. We man. literally had the guy, the lead engineer for that car, on our podcast. His name is David Twig, and he writes for the Intercooler. Good dude. Um, nice. And he also do, he also was lead engineer for A110. Nice. Um, and his book is awesome. It's called Inside the Machine. I really recommend it. Nice. But we had to ask him. We were like, uh, the the Nissan. Um, can you just say that out loud for us? Because it doesn't it doesn't look right. Sort of like uh, that town where Goodwood is. Um, <laughs> Silver black crossover <laughs> could be a Toreg, could be an Explorer, could be a. It doesn't. It doesn't fucking matter. Color is dead. It sucks. I we just heard that Fiat is is getting rid of gray. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time Fiat made a good decision? It's unbelievable. It's been decades, literal decades, since Fiat did anything that could be called good. And I like what they're doing. I don't know if it'll help are. them sell cars in our country, but oh, I still not like what they're doing. No, no, no. We're not. We don't I guess buy it's not a big it's risk power of Stellantis, them. right? Yep. Yeah, we don't buy fucking Fiat. It's got to be the flex in there somewhere. It's We don't We do not do it. Did they, I see the Alpha and announce a new supercar the other day? New sports car. Alpha did? Yeah. Like oh, a follow yeah. on from 4C. Yeah, yeah. It's it, uh, 6C, I Ooh. believe they're calling it. Very creative. Clever. Um, they said 6 what? C. C for cunt. Yeah, yeah. Six cunt. Nice. Six cunts have developed this nice. car. It's the six minge now. <laughs> <laughs> we call it the minji, which is a type of fish in. Uh, <laughs> oh, it means what in UK? Um, Shit. I actually, to go back to Fiat, I reviewed the one two four Abarth one. Yes. And in case anyone has really watched a lot of our videos and gone, huh, I don't remember that, it was because it was so bad. I had not one nice thing to say about it. We literally threw the film in the trash, even though I came to uh, Italy to drive it. No. Yeah, it was the worst. It was awful. Imagine, if you will, a Mazda Miata broken down into its parts. And then if you took every single individual part from the handling to the engine to the feel to the styling and just went worse, 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 print it. <laughs> That's the Fiat 124. It had Barth. torque, which was the only good thing. Oh, yes. The Miata. People buy those for mid range torque. No, no, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> mm, the one the very f- reason we buy the, Miatas. They gave to, the 124 had more torque. The beer's than the kicking Miata. in. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have another in. one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Let's I'm going to have six months worth of beer in mm. one night at Caffeine and Machine. It's gonna be more questions, rant. people. Let's have it. Right here. Oh, oh we'll <laughs> come back to you, Orange. <laughs> Sir. What American car should be here? Fucking Hellcats, bro! Dude, we saw one. We saw one. There's there a, was one at Goodwood. Someone had a baby blue wide body Somebody charger Somebody had a here, Hellcat. A which, charger I don't know Hellcat. how they fit it. I don't know how it gets down the roads. Good I don't know how many people are dead because them. they tried to pass them. But props <laughs> to that person. The cyclists are just shoved into the hedges. But that was rad. Did you guys get uh, any Shelbys? Did any of the Shelbys come here? Only, lo- only you, on gray. You guys would Mach love one. a GT350. Yeah, oh, you, you that was the thing. You let me take that car with Thaddeus. Oh, I've the got R. photos. The GT350R. What a day! A car man. so good, I tried to buy the press car. What a day! Yeah, they wouldn't sell it to me. Those fucks. I was super impressed with that car. Yeah, that, that well, was. We had like four hours up in the canyons in LA yeah. with that thing. And it every was a once thing. in a while, America does something right. It yeah. is rare but brilliant when yeah. it happens. The Mach One and the lesser is spotted also very good. carbon fiber wheels as well, which kind of came and yeah, and, like, those are from Australia. Those are from he Carbon Revolution. He was an Revolution. interesting cat, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Who? Carbon Rev. The Carbon Revolution mm. guy. I met the owner of They're Carbon Revolution. They're making money now. Interesting. Those guy. car, those wheels are really, really cool, and you can really feel the. That was um, a flat plane crank car, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, a, it's a an thing. amazing, amazing car. It's a real. Um, I don't think I've buy seen. And hold. I don't think I've seen one in the UK. Um, it's, we it's we a, see some peculiar Mustangs float through the door here, but I mean, I we said Hellcat as a joke. Like, you don't want fucking Hellcats. They're dumb. They're a good time. <laughs> They're a great time. Um, but you, I think you guys would very much like a Shelby 350. 350, that's, I was a thing. That's a very, yeah. very nice thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Orange. Oh, my God. You have a 124 <laughs> engine in your car? Yeah, it's terrible. What Wait, do you have? Oh, an Alpha Mito. Okay, oh. it's probably better in that. No? Not you better? You look intrigued, okay. Zach. Well, I wanted to see if you'd like pumped it up and then your Mito's really fast. Or is it? 
Nice, he's tuned it. Oh, all right. right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's like our ecotech, you know, the engine yeah. kind of sucks. Boosty. Don't tell the cops. More questions. Oh, anybody, well. anybody else? Right there. Yeah. What as what aspects of UK car culture would work well in California? Fucking this right here. Thank you. A a a uh, Thank you everyone. This a uh Just a, not a Newcomb's ranch, Matt. And guess you know, a couple years ago I tried to do this. I, f I flagrantly He openly said he was gonna plagiarize me. I openly I and openly I said, said I was going to plagiarize here. Phil. Um, I tried to I tried to buy a piece of dirt in Malibu, California, to open this exact thing. Never worked. Um, and it could no, it could work, but it wasn't going to work there because of reasons that that don't matter. It still could work. It still you, might work, dude. Do you think honestly? Do you think American culture would accept it? I think yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I absolutely do. I think if you think um, there's enough inclusion over there to be able to warrant yes. this, I think I, yes, I do. I think the car culture is not as fragmented as the rest of the culture of the country. It's pretty inclusive, and I think if you have an event like this and and things like good vibes or some of the cars and coffees have yep. proven that people are just into cars and they kind of welcome all groups. Yeah, yeah. Southern California particularly, um, I yeah. think. I think the. Absolutely. I think the. I mean, look, there's there's you know supercars and billionaires and whatever, but there are also all kinds of. Price points and vintages and ages, yep. um, especially particularly Southern California. Yeah, I think I think, you know, it would be. Uh, we found some interesting spots like Laguna Way, like way down San Diego. Sure, it would be a fun bit of permitting. You that, know, that, we, that, that's your biggest a, issue. We have right? a very litigious um, um, culture, but uh, you know, if you made it either either a membership club where you could you could buy a membership for the year for some kind of reasonable price and. And uh, and like as as we've I've talked with Phil, the fact that you know you guys have to to buy some kind of ticket, um, it it gives people um, some skin in the game to not ruin the thing, you know, to not be a total shithead. Whereas if it's just come one, come all, whenever, wherever, for how for you know, then they then they do burnouts when they leave and they run people over and it's it's and it's terrible. Um, but I mean, a, a permanent cars and coffee establishment um they've already brought uh the bike do you guys know about the, the bike shed that place they've already brought one of those to la yeah and they put it in a neighborhood where i was like this ain't gonna work and they it's put it slammed every day it's slammed for, yeah for those that are joining us tomorrow night it's like two blocks over and one street back from magnus's it's house right, right? Here just off magnus's street bridge yeah yeah, yeah yeah i looked at the location it's really um, really intriguing yeah so i yeah, think it's between heroin needle avenue and uh <laughs> gun, gunfight boulevard legit and it's two roads over from skid row right yes yeah. it's very it's very hood it is, but it's a really um, it's cool and the restaurant's good and the vibe's cool and yeah yeah so but but also like <laughs> i we'd love some roundabouts if you could spare a few <gasps> i mean that shit is mad civilized. <laughs> we never got to talk That's about it. That's unbelievable. Roundabouts. We drove for like so an efficient. hour without stopping. I mean, wow. The, cl <laughs> the clutch life of your cars must be twice that of ours. Oh my god. Yeah. So we we love we love a roundabout, and we'll take uh, we'll take two caffeine What about uh, hill climbs? Are those a thing here? Like they close off Huge. the road. That's so something it, we should have. Yeah. Hill climbs, trials. Yeah. Time attack. You can't turn right on reds? No. Nope. Well, let me just say, whoops. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing we can't do. Yeah. My fucking bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we can't, we don't have any uh, motorsport that happens on closed roads. Well, so, no, oldest, we have like trucks. trucks. We have with Virginia City, Virginia City Hill Climbs. Yeah, well, Nevada, and there's then, no laws. Right. So. And then there's the So here we've got Prescott, Shelsley. Yeah. What else is nearby? Like Prescott and Shelsley are right on our doorsteps here, right? Oldest racetracks in the country. Yeah, New Zealand is the is the, the world global king of uh, street focused motorsport. There's a hill climb or a street sprint every weekend of the year. Sick. in New Zealand. They yeah. got so the if you really want to race a car on the street, that's where you got to go. Yeah, um, Target. Has, well, yeah, I was going to say Target. Target Tasmania. Tasmania that's completely. a different country. It's a different country. But, yeah, uh, quick, let the Corvette the out, people. I like I like seeing a C6 Corvette here at Caffeine and Machine. That's excellent. That is a that is a fine machine. Guys doing the right um, foot flex though. Yep. Speaking of coach building, if someone could coach build the interior of that car, then it would be like the perfect automobile. Yeah. That, quite, those quite are great inside, cars. Horrible interiors. Yeah. I mean that's why they, they spent them, they spent the money on the performance, which is good, but it's also got four exhaust pipes. Yeah, they that's how do. they come. 
They all do. Yeah, that's yeah, all, that's a Corvette thing. That was a British statement. Does hey, man, we it, need four need, doors to let out all them horses, does okay? Need four? Does it need four? If you, uh, some of the aftermarket exhausts go down to two, that's and I'll tell you something, looks dumb. <laughs> really? It does. Yeah. It looks dumb. Yeah. It, it looks better with it. All, all right. Another one. We're Anybody another else? One. Ooh, right now here, sir. Now we're getting interested. A thing to say. Fine. Okay. This is. Oh right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the the statement oh. was to see that, which is uh, to see the magic roundabout, which is roundabouts on roundabouts. Right. It's a roundabout surrounded is by that roundabouts. Is the one like Hemel Hempstead ways? Madness. Right. 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 Okay. So it's well. how many roundabouts are around the perimeter? About eight. Eight? Eight. 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 Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. So has someone mapped out a a. a a, a race course on this <laughs> by which by which one has to set uh, a, t- a time. Has someone time trialed this yet? This sounds like the perfect way to do a Habibi. race course event. Habibi, let me Habibi. tell you Habibi. 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 11. We have a new goal, Habibi. <laughs> we will run hatchbacks. I thought the, uh, there's a roundabout around the Arc de Triomphe, which is like eight How lanes. How many inside wheels like can we tick up? So we have, we have uh, you know, if you ever see, go to, if you ever go to like Texas, we've got these like what they call spaghetti junctions, which is like, on ramps that are over on ramps that like go back and forth and they're like 18 stories tall because there's so many on ramps going back and forth but uh yeah not as cool as that and uh, i'd like to see that is it between here and hethel can we take a lap no it's south shit all right next trip there's not much in swindon good looking out this. sir is honda okay. still there it's the only thing it's the only there thing is one in hemel <laughs> yeah 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 there's a good all one right. in hemel I'm, so, pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to, I might, I'm going to throw Somebody this send me the plot points and then, you know, a time to beat and uh, I'll get back to you on our next trip. And we will, we will do that. How no one has turned that into uh, the Targa Swindon yet. Special stage, bro. Yeah. That's a fucking, that, huh? Someone drifted it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Someone. We don't like that though. though. No, don't do that. Don't be a dick. Def- oh, cool. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, right. Next yeah. one. Anybody? Yeah, light blue shirt. What did we like at Goodwood? My favorite thing to see at Goodwood is going to disappoint all of you because it was the Beast of Turin. Do you guys know what the Beast of Turin is? Mate, that thing's rolled out every it, single year. Yeah, yeah, and to the point where you, the English are like, fucking leave it at home, bro. Uh, <laughs> we get it. It shoots fire out the side. like, And it looks like off. a baked bean. Blah, but blah, blah. Um, no, because that thing is, uh, you know, it's like 24 liters uh, it's it's a it's a four cylinder, chain drive, just just a death trap, and so I really wanted to see that run, and and that was amazing. But actually, we saw the McMurtry Spearling in person, nuts, which is the most absurd thing, uh, possibly I've ever seen in go- drive at speed. Yeah, it's one of the most impressive vehicular things I've ever seen in my entire life. And yeah. I'd seen all the videos. We've all seen all the videos. And then we watch it start. And when it drove by, I don't think he he slowed down for a corner. He I don't know if he tapped the brakes. for turn one. It this doesn't was, make sense. There's something flat. very, very sketchy about that car, though. Yeah, well, the whole yeah. Thing. If that, it, yeah, if that fan stops oh, midway yes. through, like, no, this yeah, is all yeah. hell breaks loose. The typical force is, like, you are leaving orbit yeah. and heading for the moon. Yes. Yeah. But Disclaimers were written for that. Yes. Yeah, motorsport is dangerous, <laughs> especially this. this but we, we watched that car today, and then I think 20 minutes later, we watched Lewis Hamilton's 2014 Mercedes Patronus <laughs> car go by, and it was like, oh, is that an idol? I mean, it, uh, dude, who cared? Yeah. It was a third the speed of it the looks speed. It looked, the, the, the it record looks, that Max did. Last year or whenever it was, yeah. it yes. looks like it's on a third faster than it should be. Yes. Like to stand there YouTube in trick, person, right? it looks like life in fast forward. And we saw it on Friday mm-hmm. run in the wet. Now that was actually the more impressive thing because it didn't matter. No. And everything in front of it was going, you know, slower than normal because it was wet and they were on like slicks or whatever. So they're in these vintage F1 cars and they're kind of like, Put button a little bit and working it, but not actually, you know, to make a car look fast in real life is actually quite difficult. That's why they're always drifting in videos because drifting looks fast even when it's not, yep. and going fast looks slow yep. even when it is. But to look fast like that in the wet, I mean, it was absolutely extraordinary. Yep. 
And I don't think it's responsible to sell that to regular people. Uh, well, and yet they are. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, but this goes back to your 720 McLaren conversation. It's 800 grand. It's not everyone that's going to be able to No, it's that. not everybody. It's very rich people. And we all know being very rich makes you a very good driver. Yes. Um, that's, that is a one-to-one -one correlation. Next question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, when was car design at its peak? And could it peak again? Oh. The implication is it's not at its peak now. Well, legislation will restrict that. I can add that one in. So, um, you know, des design and safety are sometimes at odds, right? So you can you can go back to like the 30s or the 20s when everything was chrome and and very pointy, and go, well, how they they don't design them like this anymore, and forget that if you had a crash at 20 miles an hour, the steering wheel would impale your chest, yeah. and you would have the most gruesome death. You know, imaginable. Dude, how good did those 50s cars look on the Cartier lawn at Goodwood, though? Yeah, those, that was cool to see. The Merc sleds. Oh, the lead sleds? The Mercury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So seeing there was a bunch of lead sleds today uh, over there. Um, and seeing those cars in England do look cool. Yeah. Um, we're kind of used to that stuff. But in terms of a design, like a resolved look and feel? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they're good. I think they're like a B. I mean, that's from the kind of rounded custom age of the 19, late 40s and early 50s of American yep. car design, which I thought was very pretty and had like a nice kind of opulence attitude to, towards it not so much speed but yeah. i think like 60, 60s race cars were great because yes, they were right. either very curvy like the 904s and things or yeah. you had the cigar cars like the f1 cars which yeah. are simple but also terrifying yeah. and pretty i mean what's cool about design is there's with within you know within uh genres there's peaks right so you've got the French in the 20s and 30s with this really aggressive sort of swoopy, the Delages and the Delahays and the Bugattis, which are just like super deco. And then you go into the, the 60s with the curvy Italian stuff. And then you've got the angular stuff from the 70s, the Bertone uh, and the Gijaro mm -hmm. stuff, which I love. Um, and then there's the nineties. Uh, <laughs> no, the three, you know, the Ferrari three fifty five and 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 F forty. Yeah. When you had things that were very purposeful and sort of wedge like. Did you say that when the pencil became non prevalent, that design started to slide away? Well, it's become more as everything is so focused on efficiency and downforce and stuff, you start to see a lot of sameness. The more computers are involved, mm. the more, and you go, I want this, this to be optimized for high speed stability and efficiency. You start to end up with a lot of very similar features that might not have been so important. Like, do you guys know what the, do you know what the Hennessy Venom F5 is? Have you seen that thing? Yeah. So that car was designed entirely by a computer. Huh. There were no humans involved. They, they had a, some bit of software, and they said, I want something that will go 300 miles an hour and hold... Oh. Mark III Golf. <laughs> I was like, is that a 1932 Triumph? Like, no, it's a, it's fucking, a person it's wheeling a, a cart golf. on a gravel road. It's a golf, it's a golf with a blown That's what your BMW ring. with burble tune sounds like, yeah. by the way. Um, so, uh, you know, as, as we narrow, you know... Zero to 60s are now in the ones. You know, eventually we're going to get to zero here. Uh, this stuff will all start to sort of look the same and it'll, and it'll be nuances. Like, have you ever seen the poster of, like, all the uh, sedans? You might call them saloon cars. And the headlights and taillights are blocked off and it's just the center sections. And they're, they, all, they all look exactly the same. This is what Dan Neal said, right? Yeah. I remember reading that article about, yeah, from, like, A pillar to B pillar. It's yeah, just the it's same all shit. identical. So. And look. Touareg, Urus, Bentley Bentayga, Q7. Well, and you've got platforms as well. Right. So that's a whole... You have that even, and the engineers have requirements worse, or right? requests. Like, look, we need to be able to fit five people in this car <laughs> and this much luggage and all these things. And because that's what the customer wants. And so the designer can only do so much. When you, when you have that and then the pressure for MPG and coefficient of drag efficiency and all these... And then uh, impact regulations, like, you're going to end up with cars that look kind of similar, which I think is why it's more impressive when a car company can make something that stands out a little bit more today. Yeah. But as far as which generation was best, it's it's so subjective. And like you said, it depends on what era from which OEM, because they all had their highs and lows. I'm a 60s kid. The oddity being that the EV world gave design landscape mm -hmm. a whole new flex right. and they didn't take it because they were worried that if it didn't look like what we already had in our garages, we wouldn't buy it. True. They were kind of right. But... Um, 
We also have a bit of rose yeah, colored like glasses because, to, because the oh, stuff you're thinking about from the 30s or the is the very best. It's we're not thinking about a fucking Opel Cadet, are we? When we talk about 60s cars, we're thinking Ooh. of the Ferrari GTO. And Drip so, Snoop Forenza, though, right? And so we've you know even today, yeah, all the regular cars are starting to look the same, but you've also got the Ferrari, the Daytona SP3, good, you know, and you've got. These the Bugatti Bolide and stuff that is the kind of stuff that when we're old and gray, we'll be looking at as as the avant garde design of this time, not the golfs. Do you think the Amira is rad? Yes. Yes, I do. It's got a flex, right? I think the Amira is a very attractive car. And there's there's one right there. Everyone should take check it out. Yeah. Um and and I mean, yeah. It's a well, very I, nice looking I car. I have a question. We do you folks feel a pride when you see a Lotus or other UK built car go by? Like, do you give it? Dude, the we up? still all aspire to own a TVR. Are you, and wait, shit. Are, you, are you a yeah? Yeah. Are you yeah, a, are you beautiful. a wanker in a Lotus or are you cool? In they're the UK, cool, right? you're cool in a Lotus. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I yeah. thought I felt I felt cool. I didn't feel like a wanker. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, which is good. I, yeah. I, it's just, it's strange that it's held that through its entire life cycle. Yeah, where it's it's um. Same as uh, like when I was in Germany uh, last year and I drove an Alpina B8 Badass. through Germany, which is a, you know, they're a pretty reserved, you know, people. And this thing had like the crazy pinstripes and the big, but everyone was kind of like, hmm, yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, drive into the yard and Alpina like, and everyone stops. There was, they were like almost yeah. like bowing, yeah. you know. Um, if the- any of you guys ever get to go to Italy and just rent a Ferrari for a day, you don't have to go buy one. I, know, I realize that's still a very expensive thing to do. But when you drive a Ferrari around Italy, like, you're a god. Because mm. um, they actually don't sell a lot of Ferraris in Italy. No. Turns out they don't have much money there. No. And, uh, it's kind so of a if broken you drive a, nation. If right? you drive a Ferrari or a Lambo around Italy, like, you're the, you're the king of the universe. But Strong question. I like that one. Next yeah. one. Matt. Matt from Under the Cuff, NATO Straps. If you guys like NATO Straps and your watches, buy them from that guy. He's got a bag full of them. Literally, buy them right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. The question is, what cars from our youths uh, do we either regret selling or would we like to buy again? Um, I've got an easy one. What's that? You Same. you guys didn't get this, I don't think. I had a Ford Racing Puma. No. And that's definitely was... pronounced Puma. Pumas are shoes where P- we come Puma, from, bro. Puma pants? Yeah. Puma. Puma? Oh, yeah. Is it Puma really? sounds way better. Puma's, Puma. That's not good. It's not a great that word either. So Puma was like this. It, did you, you In never our got... country, it means cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You never got the Ford Puma, did you? Nope. No. Dude, that no, was like the culmination of the coolest people at the table. So it had like uh, Richard Parry Jones, engineer. Ian Callum was designing it. It had a Yamaha Z-Tech motor in it. Yamaha, they it make was a good a motor. Thing. We like a, we like a Yamaha motor. We uh-huh. had the Ford Taurus SHO, yeah. that, which is a car that most people don't think is cool, but yeah. it actually is very cool. I was uh, I was lucky enough uh, to get one on a privilege scheme when I worked at Jaguar Cars years ago. Was I that did a, eleven that's a demo privilege scheme? Is that a no. Demo? So when you when you work at Jaguar Cars Uh-oh. at the time when they were owned by Ford, you get massive discount. Oh yeah, run it for twelve months. Yeah, yeah. employee discount. That right. Um, I always, uh, I had a Fox body Mustang and I would love to have another one. Does anyone have those here? No. Does anyone Why did you get rid of that car? Uh, I got to a point, it was like a whole build we did. We, and we brought the chassis up to a, a really high level. And then we realized like, holy shit, this doesn't have anywhere near enough engine for this chassis. Yeah. And I didn't want to throw another thirty or $40,000 at it. It's like a Ford that. 912, Phil. Yeah. I get you. Did yeah. someone turn that car into a fake police car? Did I see it? Yes. Really? yes. It, it now lives at the Thermal Club, which is a private racetrack country club in Palm right. Springs. And they turned it in. It was, You know, it was a police car. Right. It, it, its first life was as a San Diego Highway Patrol car. That I did not. And know. then I bought it and did all my things. So I, I ultimately I would uh, like to have another Fox Body Mustang. They are they are they have the right attitude, the right look, the right sound. They're slow as dog shit, um, but they sound really good. And uh, and as as far as muscle car goes, they're very small. It's a small muscle car, and I like the idea of a, of a small muscle car. That's a very cool. Uh, thing specifically the notchback it had two different yeah, roofs wicked. the hatchback and the notchback too. the notchback's light notchbacks are very they're very light yeah they're like 2500 pounds exactly no. 
Uh, I had a 65 Pontiac in high school that had like a GTO 400 in it and a trans and posi and all, like 60s muscle car. Yeah. No stopping, no turning, but lots of attitude, lots of burnouts. And I do miss that car a lot. Yeah. 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 It's You guys have really cool drag racing here. I think that's very cool. Uh, yeah, but we're losing the tracks. Oh, no, really? Yeah. So there was, a, there was a track just like four miles that way called Shakespeare County Raceway. It used to be called Avon Park Dragway. Um, that's now a housing estate. Um, Northweald in London got shut for whatever reason. Probably someone complained that they built a house next to it, and then they went, what the fuck is this drag strip doing here? Has drag racing dwindled in popularity? No. No? So okay. I went to Santa Pod two weeks ago for Dragstalgia, like rammed. Went to the FIA, FIM event rammed hmm. uh fully sold out for bug jam this coming week which is basically bug in in the 60s and 70s sold out um yeah it's hmm. still a thing cool it's very cool to see those cars over here and uh and appreciate they're it they're insane aren't there a bunch of old runways and shit can't somebody just take one of them because they're all uh, private housing owned. estates housing estates mm. can't do it and um, if anyone's not been to santa people. pod like absolutely do it it's mm. wicked cool anybody else next up if we're done, that'd be great. Oh, oh there is one more. Oh, yeah. What's up, bro? Motorcycle. Okay. Wait, wait. Would we rather? Is that the one? Okay. Would we rather have a good engine in a bad car or a bad... A good engine in a heavy car or a bad engine in a light car? Ah, how bad an engine? How, yeah. <laughs> is no, it a serious. Fiat 124? And if so, yeah, no. Are we in Lotus Elise territory here? Right. Caterham. Uh, you're not going to like this, but I fucking hate caterhams. Uh, yeah, it's because I'm fat. It's because I'm fat. And I drove the fat one. You know, they make they make two versions of that. They make a Caterham America. <laughs> Want to guess what the difference is? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Caterham Big Gulp. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a huge cup holder and it's eight <laughs> inches wider. That's um, uh, I think. Oof. I mean, for fun, I go no. Caterham because it, it's a really fun thing. Something that light, yeah. But if yeah. I had to live with it, I'd go big engine like an AMG. It's heavy, but it's a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I like Chargers if, or if muscle it's cars. A, if They're it's a garbage. sports car, I think I'd go. I'd go. You light, can take light weight car. out. You can't factor a shit engine out of the equation. Yeah. That's that's that is true. You can cut panels off. Ask New Zealand; they do that. Yeah, yeah. they do. Uh, that the, um, the <laughs> I hated that caterham so much, though. God, was it terrible! I don't know what people like about those things. I mean, actually, no, it's not. That's a lie. I do know what people like about it. I just don't like those things. They think it's the essence of motoring. <laughs> Boy, have they never felt the actual essence of motoring? Um, it's the, the front end and the back end are off of two completely different cars. Yeah. It's like driving one car at the front and a different car at the back. That's why I didn't like the Morgan, though. Well, uh, yeah, no, that, that's what uh, the Morgan Plus 4 Morgan's is that exact great thing, in a straight line. except charming. If you want to meet women, drive a Morgan Plus 4 in America. Oh, Woo! yeah, I was going to say, in England, Woo! it doesn't, it, do, Baby. it does not. Work. No, no, no. It's like having an English accent. It's that. It's that oh my exact God, thing. You're from they England? assume you are smart Talk and interesting, me. and you don't have to be fucking either. Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> you must be an architect or something. Are we gonna do? Are we gonna do one more for the road? Yeah. Do we have one more? Anybody? Back. Shout it out. Wait, wait. What? What? Do we, any one car? tank of fuel. One tank of fuel. Any one car, last car. One last drive. Yeah. The last drive I ever get to do. Are you are you are you wanting us to qualify the drive? Where are we driving, sir? Is this the question? Anywhere. Mm. Honda Fit in Sweden. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Vantage V12 manual. Where are you going? Where am I going? I don't know. Uh, somewhere twisty, but with straightaways. It doesn't matter where. The view won't be as important. Um. I'm going to hypothesize because I haven't actually driven this one yet, but based on what I've seen and I know, uh, I'm going to have a, 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 a Gordon Murray Automotive T50 and drive that motherfucker up the hill at Goodwood at the top of third gear, baby. Up and down and 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 up and down. That thing is the jam. Oh, well, sorry. Go ahead, Phil. Uh, 250 Luso, Route 33, Ojai. Oh, yes. Great, bro. You guys have no idea where he's talking about, but it is pr 
probably California's best road. Yeah. Currently impassable, unfortunately, because of mudslides. Mm. See, we Top don't road. have rain, and then we get rain, and we can't handle it. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's America right That's a good there. road. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Really great uh, road. That is, if you ever come to California, anytime after September when they rebuild the road, no. uh, drive the 33 uh, north of north of Ojai. That's fantastic. Huh. Um, I've just seen your T-shirt, James. Hmm? No. Oh. It's America. Shake and bake, baby. Shake, Shake and bake. bake. It's a real, <laughs> it's a awesome. real America shirt. Um, oh, well, God. that's kind of I it, think right? that's a show. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here at Caffeine and Machine. Um, this, has, this has been a wonderful time. I'm not just going to have one pint because we're staying here. Fuck it. Let's go. Oh, boy. Crack open the scotch, Please baby. Please ask him about Elon Musk after beer yeah. number three. <laughs> yeah. A show without Tesla. A crashed one. Oh, man. <laughs> We were walking. We were walking up uh, Goodwood Path today, and we walked by the Tesla like stand. And this poor young kid, he's like twenty one with an iPad, and he's like, "Sir, would you be interested in driving one home today?" And <laughs> tell him what you said. Not even if it was free. No, Matt, what I told Matt, what I told Matt says to this guy like at ninety, he's, "You couldn't fucking pay me, bro." <laughs> It was literally before <laughs> breakfast. It was eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, Honey, yeah. how's your new job at Goodwood? Like I cried he- in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> this man yelled at me. And then at breakfast, the guy goes, where are you from? We go to Los Angeles. He goes, I'd like to go to America. Where should I go? <laughs> like, what? Mm. Where, There's a lot of real estate to play A with. lot of real estate, mm. man. You don't know how fucking big you're asking. <laughs> And, uh, and he goes, should I go to Las Vegas? I hear that's good. We go, no. No, you should not. Nevada's got benefits, though. Nevada does. There's mm. no laws in Nevada. Did you guys know that? There's no laws in Nevada. That's the one thing you need to know if you ever come to America. Treat Nevada as such. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right, thank you very, show. very much. I'm going to say this one time, uh, and then we're going to be done. Uh, because it's really awkward. I don't offer myself up for pictures, but if anyone wants a picture with Zach and I, just ask, please just ask. If you don't ask, you won't get, and I'm not, I'm not, hey, do you want to take it? Because then if you say no, I'm going to go in there and hang myself like Anthony Bourdain. So you're you're going to have what, honestly, you're going to have what Magnus had and you're going to have a cue. But if anybody wants one, as long as Phil's staff brings me a beer, I'm about it. So thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you very much.